Hello and welcome. The title of today's class, Dead in Sins. Dead in Sins. We open up in Jeremiah chapter 44 and we read in verse 1 to 23. Jeremiah 44 and 1. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwelled in the land of Egypt. So the word that came to Jeremiah pertaining to who? The Jews, the children of Israel that dwelt in the land of what? Egypt. And which, which dwell at Meg, Megiddo, Migdal, sorry, and at Tophanes, and at Noph, and in the country of Patros. So Jeremiah was saying what? Born in the children of Israel, I dwelt in these, these places, saying what? Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, God send this message to you. You have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, and upon all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are, des they are a desolation, and no man dwelleth therein. So the most I say, tell them that Mig Mig Migdal, and at Tophanes, and at Noph, what? And Egypt, the children of Israel who dwell in there, remember the, the destruction I bring upon Jerusalem. You see that? You see what? The desolation. And no man dwelleth therein. Nobody's living in Jerusalem. No, he says, as, 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 totally annihilated. Because of their wickedness. Because what? Because of their wickedness or sins, which they have committed to provoke me to anger. The most I say, the children of Israel have violated my law and provoked him to anger. In that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods. Idolatry. You see that? That's why you follow these false institutions on Sundays and Fridays. You see that? Violating the Most High God. Sabbath. The Most High say what? Idolatry. Idolatrous pra idolatry practices. Other gods. Whom they knew not. Neither they, ye nor your fathers. Howbeit I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. The Most High say I will send righteous prophets. Prophets from me. You see that? I send my prophets to go and gather them. Go and gather them. Go and warn them. You see what? Howbeit, the most I say, I sent unto you all my servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. The most I say, I hate that what idolatry, going after other gods besides me. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from the wickedness or sin or transgression or violation of the laws to burn incense unto other gods. You see that? The most I say, burning them incense, burning in all these institutions. You see that? Burning the incense and you're smoking up. The most I say, you can keep my Sabbath, you can keep my laws. That's wickedness against me. Wherefore, my fury and my anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. And they are wasted and desolate as at this day. As at this day. You see that? This was happening what? Under Babylon. And what happened? You sent me back home from um, Cyrus. Cyrus passed the decree. You see that? Darius um, executed and sent the children of his back, back home. Go and build up the temple. And what the most I did again? We went back doing the same thing again and he sent the Romans. You see that? Go and take them. This fourth beast kingdom. Go and take them. The most I say what? And they are wasted, desolate as at this day, as it, as it at this day. Therefore now, thus said the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, Wherefore commit ye this great evil against your souls? Against what? Your souls. I've been teaching this and I've been teaching this and, 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 and people not understanding. I, I pray you're understanding what the Bible is talking about. He's talking about when he's coming to judge, he's not talk, coming to judge flesh. Not this. You'll be dead. Some of us going to be dead. Gone. But your soul lives on. That's what he's saying. Therefore, verse 7, now thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, Wherefore, or why, commit ye this great evil against your souls? Against what? Your souls. Because it's your soul that will come to judge, to judge and destroy. Whether it goes up, <laughs> in, back to angelic status, or it goes to down, to destruction. You need to understand. He said, call it like evil against your souls. So by violating my laws, or breaking the laws of God, you're doing evil against your souls. Not the Mosai. He said, your souls. To cut off from you, man and woman. You see that? To cut off from you, you're going to hurt yourself. You're hurting yourself. That's what he say. Child and suckling out of Judah. To leave you none to remain. That's what the Mosai said. That's why I have this Because you're violating against your own soul. Because it's not in alignment with me. In that you provoke me unto wrath with the works of your hands. Burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt. Whether ye be gone to dwell. That you might cut yourselves off. That you might what? Cut yourselves off. No hurt the Mosai. That you might cut yourselves off. The most I say is, you children of Israel is doing it to your own self. <laughs> you're what? You're what? You're bringing evil, great evil against your soul. And what? You're cutting yourself off from me, from your creator. The most I say, you cutting yourself off from me. I ain't doing you nothing. I just give you laws. Keep my laws. Follow my laws. And that you might be a curse. That you might be a what? A curse. You might be a curse. You might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. That's why the heathen like mocking me. The heathen, they're making a proverb and a byword, byword of the children of Israel. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives and your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives? You see, you see that? The wickedness of your wives and your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. You see that? 
Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives? So the kings and their wives and your 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 own wickedness, you children of Israel, and the wickedness of your wives. That's what we say. The kings wicked, the wives, the kings' wives wicked, you wicked, your wives wicked. Which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. They are not humbled even unto this day. Neither have they feared nor walked in my law. The most I say, you don't fear him. You children of Israel walking, doing your own thing. You see, the most I say, you don't fear him. You're dead in sins. Doing your own thing. You don't fear me. You're cutting off your own soul. You're bringing it to your own self. That we say. They, they have not feared me. Nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your father. So in, most I say you're not keeping the law because you're not humble. It's prideful and arrogant. That's why you're not keeping the law and the statutes. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. The most I keep reiterating, I'm the God of Israel. I'm your God and none else. That we keep saying it over and over. And nobody didn't get in it. Behold, I will set my face against you for evil and to cut off all Judah. That's what the most I say. That way we end up what? Dead in sins. The most I say what? I will set my face against you because you're not keeping my law. You're not keeping my I give you for your, for your good, for your protection. And I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt, to, so, to, to sojourn there, and they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. They shall even be consumed by the sword and by the famine. They shall die from the least even unto the greatest, by the sword and by the famine, and they shall be an execration and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach for I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword by the famine and by the pestilence he said that's how I destroy your homeland I destroy any behind in the very land of your captivity that's in, why I think this happening to us right in the, in the diaspora this is spiritual Egypt right now you see that the next captive, cap, the last captivity you must say what just as I destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD I destroyed in Babylon and I punished all the behind he said I destroyed in 70 AD till now and I'm punishing all the behind in the diaspora the same way did I make that up? For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt. Egypt in what? In Exodus 20 and 2. Let's see what Egypt is talking about. What is the definition of Egypt? Biblical. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So when you keep you in Egypt, Egypt is a house of bondage or your house of your captivity or your house of your slavery. You need to be in the house of a bondage or captivity or slavery right now. So the Most High said, verse 13, Jeremiah 44, 13, For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt. You see that? Ancient Egypt and what? Now in, the, in, the, in spiritual Egypt, spiritually Sodom and Egypt. You see that in the in according to Revelation 11. Yes, it's spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies, you see that? Dead in sins. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also a lot of crucified. Spiritual Sodom, spiritual Egypt, Egypt right here. Where the, the things that Sodom are going on, right here. Prevalent, right here. The, the, the witchcraft of Egypt, right here. You need to understand why didn't this over this here? You need to understand and pay attention. Spiritual Egypt, and they bring all the, all the, all, all the, the activities of ancient Egypt right here, and, 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 and ancient Sodom, right here. You need to understand. That is, that's why it's spiritual Sodom in Egypt. The land of the children of the Israel captivity. Your final captivity. The most I say what? Jeremiah 41, 13, for I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt. You children of Israel, he said, in a captivity, I'll still punish you. Because they're in the midst of sin, they'll not come back to my laws. As I have punished Jerusalem, just as I have destroyed Jerusalem, I'm going to bring the same destruction by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. You see that? So there's no escape. It's like, you see, a well, thing going rough for me here, but I'm going to move to the country, yes? I think you're going to that country. Thing going more rough for you, know? I have to move, to, I'm going to move to the next country after five years, I'm gone. And you keep running, and you keep running, and you keep running. The word Jeremiah, Deuteronomy 28 say, Moreover, all these curses shall what? Follow thee and pursue thee wherever you go. <laughs> the most I say, in the diaspora, in the Egypt, I will punish you wherever you go. In captivity, once you're not coming back to my laws, the objective is to make it repent. You see that? Uh, something wrong. Cry out. That we say. So that none, verse 14, Jeremiah 44, 14, so that none of the remnant of Judah, which are going into the land of Egypt, to sojourn there, shall escape or remain. The most I say, that one, take all the behind all. Once all in violation, you see that? Once you are in the midst of sin, Moses says, I won't, I won't come for you, because the wicked is my sword, that they should return into the land of Judah, to the which they have desired to return to dwell there. And you see that everybody wish they want to go home, but they don't want to do what it takes to come back home. Come back to the Most High God and obey His laws. Uh, for none shall return, but such as shall escape. The Most High says, None only come back. You see that? When you know what? The such a, shall, who is the such a, that shall escape? The remnant who return to the laws. You see that? The remnant of the elect who return to them laws. That's who going to escape my judgment, the Mosai says. But for none shall return, but such as shall escape. The ones who are going to keep, return to them laws, who are going to repent and stop their sin and come back to them laws. The rest I'm going to put them to death. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. All these what? These men, you see that? We've <laughs> seen them things from young. Is who? 
the mama, see, dragging you behind <laughs> to all these um, idol worship houses, idol houses, you see that? Burning the incense, and burning the candles, and what I see what? But then all the men that knew that their wives had burned incense on the other gods, these husbands, no, they were just home quiet, and they, let, let, them, let mama take the train, go on, and they go and come right into them idol houses. You see that? Right into the idol houses, always fighting against them things from a, from a tribe. Because I know something was wrong. I was telling them, this is something wrong, something wrong. Book, shut them out, ring your ears, pinch them out, you see that? But then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in in the land of Egypt, in Patros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, you see that? Jeremiah, you see that we tell you that message that the Lord the Most High sent for, sent for us? We will not hearken unto thee. They say what? We are listening to you. <laughs> We will not listen unto you, but because what? You use them of peace of the Lord. You see what? So we don't know us. We ain't listening to the Lord. Now we understand why the Lord said, okay, Lord, yeah? He said, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth out of our own mouth. We're going to do our own will, our free will. We're going to make our breaks. You see that? To burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven. To do what? Burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, idolatry, false gods, you see that, and to pour drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty of victuals and were well and so no evil. You see that when we was worshipping the Queen of Heaven, straight worship, you see that, we had plenty food, we had it nice, we saw no evil, we were living it up. You see that, <laughs> they say we were living, so they say the Most High God, we was worshipping them, the, the devil himself, and he was being blessed. That's what they tell Jeremiah. We don't want to hear God. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, since we stopped worshipping the Queen of Heaven, you see that? Idol idol idolatry. And to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all, all things. We have lacked all things. We don't have no victuals again. <laughs> Food scarce. We have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. They have what? They have lacked. We lack all things. And we get... Put into the, begin put to death by the sword and by famine. You see that? The killing me left, right, and center. You're hungry, you're hungry, you want food. Go to Acts chapter 19, verse 24. Acts 19, verse 24. Acts 19, 24. Acts chapter 19, verse 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which had made silver shrines for Diana. For who? For Diana. Who's the queen of heaven you're talking about? Diana, Diana, Diana. Brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So you see that? Right? He could have making, he was, because he brought no small gain unto the craftsmen because what? He was buying them idols. He was buying them idols. He knew silver shrines for Diana. He was buying them idols. They love idolatry. Whom he called together with the workmen of of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. You see that? By selling idols. You see that? Now they have what? The Caesar bow piece. You see that? That cross and the Caesar bow piece. You see that? And the, 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 the most devious murderer, hitman, drug dealer, killer, and the biggest Caesar bow gold piece. You see that? And not, not, not taking body day after day, but taking life, taking life, taking life. Poor monger in adultery with the same Caesar bow piece on my chest. You see that? <laughs> and, 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 and committing um, adultery. And fornication with the same Caesar book, and it's supposed to be a symbol of Yahushua, right? You need to be and a symbol of the Most High God, right? Yeah, okay. So you see what they say that this is where we're making you well. As they do this day, the same thing. What are they doing with the Caesar book piece on the cross this day? The same thing. <laughs> you see that, that by this craft we have our wealth, making what they was making silver pieces back then. Now it's gold. You see that, you need to pay attention. Gold and wood. Moreover, ye see, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. You see that? So you see Paul, son in Mirai, Paul telling the people that there is not no god. Don't buy them silver, them, them, um, them um, idols of um, Diana. He said, don't buy them images. Paul he said, he, he hampering me well, we cash flow. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, you see that? We can't make money again. But also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should, should be despised. And her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipped. And when they had heard these saints, they were all full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the feet of Ephesus. You see that? You say, Great is Diana. Great is Diana. We come to verse 34. And when they knew that he was a Jew, 
all with one voice about the space of... Let me continue reading down 29 so you can understand. And the whole city was filled with confusion and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel. They rushed with one accord into the theater so the Jews were traveling with him. And when Paul would have entered into the, onto the people, the disciples suffered him not. So he was going to talk to them. The disciples said, no, you can't go. The, that rage that going on right there, they're going to put you to death. And certain, and certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, the chief men out over that city, with the Paul friends, sent unto him, desiring, desiring him that he would not venture himself into the theater. They said, Paul, don't go in there. <laughs> because the uproar that he was in, because Paul telling the people, stop buying their idols, them Caesar bow pieces. They said, it was Diana pieces then. Now it's who? Caesar bow and the cross. And you see that, the cross and the ankh and all kind of stuff. All kind of stuff. You see that? Idols. The most I say, they're all idols. You pay attention. They say, what? Well, don't go in there, Paul. They, they, they're going to rip it to pieces. And they drew because they're mad upon their idols. The children of Israel are mad upon their idols. <laughs> and they drew Alexander out of the mouth. Sorry, 32. Some therefore cried one thing and some another. For the assembly was confused. And the more part knew not where, wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude. The Jews put him forward. And Alexander beckoned with a hand. And would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew. All with one voice about the space of two hours. Cried. Greatest Diana of the Ephesians. Two hours straight. They're just chanting. They don't want to hear nothing about God's laws. You see that? They don't want to hear nothing about stop committing idolatry. They don't want to hear nothing about repenting. You see that? Great two hours of chanting that thing. And when the tongue clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? He said, which man among you don't know that we, we, the whole if, if, if Ephesus is what? Diana worship. Pagan worship. That's what they're saying. So you see, that's where he come here. We don't want to hear him. You see that? We don't want to hear him. That was when we to establish the God of Jeremiah 44 and 18. But since we left off the burning incense to the Queen of Heaven, you see that? Or Diana of the Ephesians. You see that? And to drink and to and to pour our drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things. You see that? We're lacking things. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't have the food like we, like we used to have. We're splurging like we had. Things hard with me now. And have been consumed by the sword and by famine. You see that? And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven, Diana, and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make cup? Did we make cup? Sorry, did we make a cakes to worship her and pour drink offerings unto her without our men? Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, The incense that you burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them and came it not into his mind? He said, What? You are burning them incense, then the Most High remember them, so that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of the Jews. You see that the Most High was watching you and watching you as patient, long suffering. You see that? Watch, look at what they're doing. Look at what they're doing. Burning them incense to the Queen of Heaven, burning them incense to the Diana. You see that? Making drink offerings, making. And the Most High said, Did not, so that the Lord could no longer bear it. The Most High said, Okay, I've seen enough. Because of the evil of your doing, because you see that you want to do your own will. You see that? Full of this false institution. Sunday worship, Friday worship, you're having that time. You see that? The Most High said, What? I will no longer bear it. You see that? Because what? You're dead in sins. You're in the midst of sin. Moses says, so that the Lord could no longer bear it because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which he have committed. We do not know the history. What, why, what caused us to be why here, why we, here where, we are, why we are, where we are right now. The vo vo violation, violation of God's laws, going into the midst of sin, idolatry, becoming dead. Dead, spiritually dead in sins. That's what it is. We don't know who we are. We lost your identity. Therefore is your land a desolation. That was the most I said. That's why Jerusalem has been destroyed. That's why I allow Babylon to come and destroy it. That's why I allow the Romans to come and destroy it for you. What? Idolatry. Going after other gods. And an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant. As at, as at this day. You see that? So Musa said the Jews are scattered in the diaspora. As at this day. You need to pay attention. That's why Yahushua coming to gather the, 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 the true Israelites from the diaspora in their captivity. Because you have burned incense and because you have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord. So what? The voice of the Lord is what? To walk in His law, nor in His statutes, nor in His testimonies. So the voice of the Lord is what? His laws, His statutes, His testimonies. You see that? You're born in sense of dying. You're starting to worship idols and sinning and you keeping my laws. And it happened unto you as at this day. You see that? Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah that are in the land of Egypt. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouth, and fulfill with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven 
You see that? And to pour out drink offerings unto her, you will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. You see that? So Jeremiah said, okay, all the, do, all, the, all, the, do all the thing. Do all the thing. Go to um, Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, I read in 1 to 27. Daniel 9, I read in 1 to 27. Daniel 9 and 1. In the year, sorry, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. So you see what Daniel said, I understood that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah that what? The children of Israel going to go into captivity under Babylon for 70 years. You see that? Desolation. We're going to destroy Jerusalem for 70 years. We send them under Nebuchadnezzar for 70 years in the Babylon captivity. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So um, Daniel said what? I seek to the Lord. I went to pray. Pray to the Lord. And I prayed unto the Lord by God and made my confession. And did what? Made my confession. Confess my sin. To my sins to who? The Lord. The Lord. No, to my pastor. To the Lord. To the Most High. That's what Most High said. And Daniel said, made, and I prayed unto the Lord and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God. He understands. He's, he, these are, these are men, men of the Lord. He said, what? God is dreadful. He needs to pay. That was Moses said, I watched them. I watched them and I watched them. Do Jeremiah 44 and verse... Um, Jeremiah 44 and verse... Let me find that verse. Moses said, I was patiently watching all you. <laughs> Do all the thing. And then what? I'll come and roar. Verse 22. So that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings. You see that? Because of the abominations which you have committed. The Moses was just watching, watching, then roar. He's going to roar. <laughs> okay, enough. I've seen enough. Go back to Daniel 9 and verse 4. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. That's to the most I will have mercy too. You see, I will keep my mercy to the children who keep, or as well who repent, who keep them laws. If they don't keep my laws, I'm dreadful to you. I'm dreadful to you. You need to understand. We have sinned. Daniel said what? I have con My confession is what? We have sinned. And I've committed iniquity. You have to confess your sin. And I've done wickedly and I've rebelled. Even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment from the laws of God. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets. Which break in thy name to our kings, our princes, our fathers and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces. That's why we don't know who you are in the diaspora. You see that? You're watching one day hating everybody. You're putting a bullet in your head and none do understand. That's a, a, a child of God like you. you, you that's you, you, you say, brethren. You didn't understand because what? You're dead in sins. You're spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. You're living in, in, in Satan's kingdom. Living in the children of Satan. Yes, the physical children of Satan. You need to understand. O Lord, righteousness belong unto thee. Your righteous judgment, and uh, but unto us confusion of faces. As at this day, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, through all the country where thou hast driven them. You see that? Because of these the trespasses that they have trespassed against thee. Because of our own sins and our own violations. O Lord, to us belong confusion of faces. But that's why what? That's why we're dead in sins. Confusion of faces. To our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, and because we have sinned against thee. So guess what? Kings and your kings are right among you in the captivity. Don't know who they are. You don't know who they are. They don't know who you are. You need to pay attention. That's why the Moses said, you better love your brethren. Love your brethren. Apply the law to your brethren. The man that's going to be ruling over you, you see that right in the midst of you. And you're violating, you need to pay attention. It was like God has scattered the whole nation, that's what Moses says. says. For violations. So you need to repent and come back to the laws. To the Lord, verse 9, Jeremiah 9, Daniel 9 and 9. To the Lord our God belongeth mercies and forgivenesses. Though we have rebelled against him, he still will be merciful and he will forgive us if you return to the law. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants and prophets. So the most are going to send the law by who? The prophets, his servants, the prophets, men of God, the prophets of God. There's prophets of the devil and there's false prophets and there's prophets of God. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departed, that they might not obey thy voice, which is the what? Laws, the laws. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. Captivity, captivity. You see that? You know, that you go into their dead sleep, go into a deep sleep. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant, because we have sinned against him. Because we have what? Sinned against him. You see that? We have sinned against the Most High God. Go to Isaiah 29 and verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. 
They are drunk. Hmm. The children of Israel are what? Drunk, but not with wine. They ain't drink no real wine. Something happened. They stagger, but not with strong drink. They, you said the, the, the behaving like drunkards, but they ain't drink no strong drink. They ain't drink no wine. Why? For the verse 10, Isaiah 29, Isaiah 29, 10, For the Lord had poured out upon, the, upon you, the children of Israel, the spirit of deep sleep. The spirit of what? Deep sleep. Dead in sins. You see that? Deep sleep. Spiritually, you're, you're, you're asleep. And had closed your eyes. The prophets and the rulers, the seers had he covered. He shut everybody down. You see that? Shut everybody down. Put them in the sleep. Put them in the dead state for violation of the law. You see that? A shot king, prince, everybody go down. Go into captivity, the whole nation. But in Daniel 9 and verse 12, 11. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. You see that? Deep sleep. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because you have sinned against him. Deuteronomy 28. That we're talking about. Moses says, if you don't keep the laws, you're going into captivity. The nation the nation's going to rule over you. You're going to serve other gods. Wood and stone. You see that Christian cross and, 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 and all them all, all the religion. Moses says, go ahead. You go into captivity. Verse 12, and he had confirmed his word, which he spake against us and against our judges that judge us, by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven had not been done as had been done upon Jerusalem. This is what I say. You see that? Daniel said, nothing ever happened to another nation that happened to the children of Israel. Like this, what we're going through here now? Daniel said, no. Nobody ever get this. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet we made not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. They say that we do want to repent, repent and confess our sins to the Most High. Therefore had the Lord watched upon us, upon the evil, and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. Daniel said the Most High is just for what he do to me. For it's because we are wicked as hell. We are in violation. You see that he put it in, in the sleep. In a deep sleep. Because we didn't obey his voice, the Lord, that his commandments and judgment. And now, O Lord our God, thou that hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten the renown, as at this day we have sinned and we have done wickedly. He confessing his sins. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain. You see what? Turn your anger away from me, Lord. Turn your fury from me. Because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers. You see that? In Jerusalem and thy people have become a reproach to all about us. You see that? That's why they're laughing at me, they're mocking me. Um, jump to verse 19. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of God, Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the son, the sorry, even the man, Gabriel, the angel Gabriel come back. You see that? Whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touch me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. I come to teach you something. I come to reveal something to you. Skill and understanding. I come to give you the understanding of this mystery. Learn this. I'm going to, I'm going to reveal something to you. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. When he started to confess his sin and pray, you see that? And I am come to show thee. So when he confesses sin before the Most High, he will send holy good angels there. Not evil angels, the evil spirit. Good angels will come to you and you'll do what? Give you skill and understanding to understand the mysteries in here. The dark parables, the dark saints. The, you see that? The metaphors, the similitudes, the allegories. You need to understand. Most said, when you confess his sin, he will send the, the good angel who come, Gabriel, to give him what? Skill and understanding of what this mystery is, is about. I'll read something there again, again, Daniel. You see what? And at the beginning of his supplications, when he had to confess his sin and the prayer, the commandment came forth. The Musa I say, go to him. And I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, because you confess your sin and you come back to the Lord sincerely. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. So you... Um, and verse 25. 25. And to, and to bring the everlasting righteousness. To bring in what? Everlasting righteousness. And to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. No, no, verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So you say what? From the time... Going forth to the commandment to restore to build Jerusalem, when they build back Jerusalem, unto the Messiah the Prince, until Christ come, it will be seven weeks. 
You see that seven weeks and three score and two weeks. 62 and 7, 69. And the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous time. Be back the temple. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. But not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city. And what? Destroy the city and the sanctuary. So he say after three score and two weeks, sixty sixty-two. After sixty-two weeks, dispensation of time, you see that? Yeah, who sure go get killed, put to death. You see that? You get put to death. So you tell him that within these 69 weeks, from the fall of um, Babylon to the time Christ comes, he will come and walk the earth. And then after that, 62 weeks, after that split, dispensation of time, he will get cut off. And who will come in? And after the three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. He will get put to death, he will go back to, to, to the Father. But not for himself. The reason why he get put to death is what? Not for himself. Not because the, the, the heathen thought we killed him. Not because the wicked of Israel thought we killed him. But what? Go to John 1, 29. He said, not for himself, but for who? <laughs> you need to understand. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day John seeth Yahushua coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. He taketh away what? The sin of the world. Who is this world? John to verse 31. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. To who? To Israel. Therefore am I come baptized in water. John the Baptist. You see what? The Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the nation of Israel. You see that? That, was, that sin means what? Grace and faith. Grace to give it time to repent to come back to them same laws. That's what you're talking about. You won't get put to death for the laws, for, for the sins that you would get put to death for under Moses if you didn't kill an animal. He said, go and, go and scatter in the diaspora. Where you get an animal from living in an apartment building? Where you get an animal to sacrifice for sin? No one says, no, you're in captivity. You can, sometimes, some of us can off, uh, afford a good meal. A three, three, I mean, two to three good meals a day, like, 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 like how we, we, know we eat. <laughs> I mean, that, it is what it is. But he said, what? You don't have, everybody don't, not obligated to eat three squares a day, but I'm just saying, according to the heathen customs, you know, you eat what, breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner, but what, most I say what, you, you, you don't have money to, you're struggling to put three, three squares on the table, but what, you, you're going to have animal to sacrifice, you're going to buy animal to sacrifice to sin, your mother sin me doing, <laughs> that's what saying, no, but what, but not for himself, he's not cut off, he's not going to be killed for himself, because he's going to be the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world, and may manifest to Israel, the children of Israel. I go be your, your grace now. You see that? I go be your grace. I am the lamb. I am the sacrifice animal for all the sin you're doing, but you better repent before I come back. That's what you're talking about. Go back to um, Daniel 9 and 26. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. But who? The children of Israel, to give them grace and faith and, until they come back to the laws, be prior to it, before you come back. And the people of the prince, and who? The people of the prince. So when Yahushua died, when he get put to death and he go back to the Father, Somebody coming, you need to pay attention. And the people of the prince shall come and shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. What happened in 70 AD? What did Christ say? Go to Matthew 24. Just go to the Bible. Let, let God be training man a liar. He said, And the people of the prince shall come and shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 1. And Yahushua went out and departed from the temple. The what? The temple in Jerusalem. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. So they were showing him, you know, boasting and look how nice and look how nice um, the Zerubbabel and then built back the temple. You see that? And Ezra and look at look how nice. And Yahushua watched them. And verse 2. And Yahushua said unto them, You see not all these things? He says, See all this? What are you boasting about? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He said, Not one stone with <laughs> all the prideful about here ain't going down. It's going to be sacked again. I will say, this has never as a command, but burn it to the ground. Break it down and burn it. it come in, somebody come into what? Break it down and burn it again. You see what? There shall not be left here. One stone. One stone. One stone. Upon another up left here. Go back to Daniel 9 and verse 26. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. He's going to die and go back. you crucify him. But not for himself. The purpose of his crucifixion was to become the Lamb of God, to give the children of take away the sin of Israel, the, the, the nation of Israel, to give them grace and faith. So the time, so they go repent. In the midst of sin, 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 they ain't gonna get put to death. Because his blood covering you. That we're talking about. That's, just, that's the animal that you're supposed to be sacrificed in the Old Testament. That's his blood doing in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. Protecting you and giving you time to repent before you come back because your blood gonna be the sacrifice when you come back if you don't repent. It's gonna be a big sacrifice. That's what we say. You, 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 you have to pay. Blood is only blood without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. So if you don't repent and come back to, to the laws, 
Your blood is going to be the sacrifice. That's what you need to understand. That's why pastors can't teach it. They don't understand. Because the Messiah say, the Ut, Gabriel say what? Verse 22. And, and he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh Daniel, angel Gabriel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. You see that? <laughs> because your pastor don't have skill and understanding. Because the angels are not dealing with them. They don't, the righteous, they deal with fallen angels. The holy angels, they give them no understanding of this. No skill and understanding of this. Go back to um, Daniel 9 and 26. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, because he sacrificed his life. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Who came and destroyed the second second of Jerusalem? The Romans, the Romans, the Romans. You see what? They come in and they burn this down again. <laughs> you see what? They come in and destroy the people of who? Who are they? The people of the prince. Who is this prince? We're going to see who this prince. Do you see that? And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. You see what? They come in and wage war against you. What happened in 780? You see that from 66 to 70 AD, Titus and Vespasian come and wage war against Jerusalem. You see that? And at the end, what is desolation? And until the end of the war, war, they came and made war with the children of Israel. Desolation that determined. Most, the Most say, it's going to burn down to the ground. It down. You see the, the most I tell Daniel, was telling Daniel this, same thing Christ said in Matthew 24, they come in to destroy it again. <laughs> you see again, a second time. You need to understand. Pay attention. Who is this people of the prince? Who is this people of the prince? Let's go to the Bible and see. Go to John 12 and verse 31. John chapter 12, verse 50. See, good. You see, the people of the prince shall come. John chapter 12 and verse 31. John 12 and 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. The who? The judgment of this world. And there's a prince of this world. You see that? You understand? There's a prince of this world. Somebody ruling this world. He's going to be cast out. He come in because when the judgment of this sinful kingdom come, the ruler of this sinful kingdom will be cast out. You see that from his authority here. Go to um, um, for John 14, 30. John chapter 14, verse 30. The prince of this world. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, this Yahushua, for the prince of this world cometh and had nothing in me. Yahushua saying, the ruler of this world, of this sinful kingdom, he is not, he is not nothing to me. He, he is not of my father. He has nothing in me. That we saying. It's two different entities he's talking about. I am of God, I am lawful, he is lawless. You see that you see that he is lawless. The peace of prince of this world. He has dominion here. He need, and Yahweh says he has nothing in me. Nothing in me. John 16, 11. John 16, 11. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. He's the Yahweh say what? The prince of this world is judged. You, you see that you need to understand. I'm coming to judge him. To judge him. To judge him. Go to um, Luke 22, verse 53. Luke 22, verse 53. Luke 22 and verse 53. Luke 22 and 53. When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your hour and the power of, and the, and the power of darkness. So you are saying what? This is your hour and the what? The power of darkness. Because you're saying to the, the chief priests of the Pharisees and, and scribes. You say I was in the temple teaching all this. Not all come <laughs> against me. Jump to verse 52. Then I wish I said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple, the Pharisees and the elders, which will come to him because I come to take him. Be you come out as a, against a thief with swords and stabs that when you come to, to, to take him to crucify him. You say, you come, you come against me like a thief and I was teaching all the temple all the time. You say, well, then take me there. You come as a, as a criminal. Is that what he's saying? When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. You say, who? Your hour, the prince of the, the, prince of the, the people of the prince. You need to understand. Pay attention. That's the Israelite you're talking to, right? He said, this is your hour and the power of darkness. The, what the darkness, the ruler, the darkness of this world. You need to pay attention. <laughs> the prince of this year. Pay attention. Go to Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. Read him 1 to 13. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 through 13. Luke 4 and 1. And Ahushua, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. You see that? Tempted of who? The devil. When he was fasting. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So the, the, the devil's coming at him with an empty stomach. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. You see, make bread. Are you hungry? Turn that into. He was doing what? Giving him commandments to see what if you can obey him. He's, he's crafty as hell. Turn that stone to bread. So what is he doing? If you do it, he do what? You obeying me? You see that? You to understand the, the, the wise of the devil. And then who shall answer them and saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. He quote Deuteronomy and three frame. You see that? You see what? Physical bread alone, you see that? The game will give you immortality. That we say. Physical bread, you need to sustain your life. Yes. But what? To get immortality means what? To live, alone, live by bread alone means what? Immortality or eternal life. 
You have to be by, by, by every word of God. The laws of God is what going to give you eternal life. That we tell him, or immortality. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment. And who's the devil to have that power to be, to be leading the, the, the Son of God? And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. You see what? I will, the devil tell the Son of God, I will give you the, the power on this earth, because he's the what? The prince of the power of this earth. This is his domain. So the people of the prince is the turn of the devil. You need to understand what Daniel talked about. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give unto and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. The, your father gave me dominion here. He said, he leads this to me. He said, so I have enough time. This, he leads this to me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. The devil said, I have power to give anything, you see, that material on this earth, to whosoever I want. So whoever worshiping me, I give them material, which is riches and wealth. See, he needs to, all this around bragging and boasting. He said, Lord bless me. He needs to understand where blessings come from. Yeah, the most I show people some, some favor, if you keep in the laws, you, see, you still are going to feed this in their captivity. But there's some people, you see, staunch, and in the midst of wickedness and evil, Malicious sin, and the most I say, and the devil, the devil say, whomsoever I will, I give it. I will bless. I, I have the power to give you money. I have the power to give you wealth. You need to pay attention. And Yahushua answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. He said, Get the hell away from me. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall also keep the commandments, keep the laws, keep the statute. That way, Yahushua said, That's all you need to do. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down from thence. What is he doing? Tempting, tempting, tempting. You need to understand. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. He just quoted Psalms 91, 11, 11 and 12. The devil quoting scripture for Yahushua, the Son of God. You see that? He quotes scriptures. You need to pay attention. Who is surrounding the false institution on Sundays and Fridays? You see that? De deceiving it behind. What do they have? A Bible. You see that? They have a Bible. Deceiving it behind. Because he what? The devil just quote Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12. He said what? For it is written, he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee, to keep thee. Let's go there. Psalm chapter 91, verse 11 and 12. Psalms 91, 11. For he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. You need to pay attention. The devil just quote that in what? Luke 4, for Yahushua. <laughs> you tell, throw yourself up. But because what? For it is written. Is it written where? In Psalm 91, 11 and 12. He quoted in scriptures. He will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time that thou that dash thy foot against a stone. And Yahushua answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He said, Don't tempt me. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Why was he tempting Yahushua, the Son of God? Because he was made little less than an angel, like us. To come, like you see, there's no immaculate conception. It's a lie. You see that? <laughs> the Holy Spirit came of him when he came out of the water from John baptizing him. He turned, pay attention. Because that's why he was allowed to tempt him. Because he came like us, a flesh, born in the flesh, seed, sperm. You need to pay attention. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. You see that? Because it means not coming back to tempt you behind, not coming back to try you. You need to pay attention. So what? You're going to try and you're going to try and you're going to try and you try because that's his job. That's his job. Go to Revelation 12, but we didn't want to tempt him. Revelation 12, 1 through 17. That's his job. That's what he does. <laughs> Am I making it up? The Bible. Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Because remember Daniel say, Daniel 9 say what? And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. They're going to come and destroy Jerusalem. 70 AD, 66 to 70 AD. The, the Romans come and destroy. Who are they? The, the, the people of the prince. Pay attention. Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. This is woman. This woman is the truth. Is the throne of Israel. It's similar to the what the twelve, the twelve tribes. Are we talking about a crown of twelve stars? The twelve tribes. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. So it's giving similar to the Mary and Yahushua, but it's talking about the children of Israel also. Rachel and the children. Rachel is here. Rachel weeping for her children. You need to pay attention. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. This is so that woman of the children of Israel. You see that. And then what? A, a, a great red dragon. Another one that coming. A great red dragon. Having seven heads and ten horns. You see that? Rome. Rome. Rome sits on what? Seven mountains. G7. Seven heads, ten horns. And seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And did cast him to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. You see that? It's only turned to G8 recently. That's what G7 since I was, uh, since I was born. G7 just and then recently it took the, 
G8 no, you see that need to pay. Because he's a deceiver, he needs to pay attention. Which was ready to be delivered. The, that dragon come and what? Stood before the woman, which is the throne of Israel. You see that? And, and using Mary as a and baby Yahushua. Who, who, what happened to him? You're gonna show you. You see that Mary and Yahushua are the, the same she's from the, the throne of Israel. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and they cast them to the earth. The devil and his fallen angels. You need to understand. That great red dragon. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered. Mary, Mary what? For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Go to Matthew 2 and 13. She's he's telling you, it's baby, baby Yahushua, and he's telling the throne of Israel. You need to pay attention to, to, to kill the throne of Israel. You see that God, the, the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. He's going to kill the throne of Israel. You see that? And it's also using it. He's going to kill the, the baby that come, the Messiah. You need to pay attention. Go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Matthew 2 and 13. I'll read one. And when Yahushua was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to, to Jerusalem. Of the days of who? Herod the king. He was the Roman emperor. You need to pay attention. Saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. And when Herod, the, so the wise men said, the wise men. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled with, with oh, and all Jews were with him. He was troubled because the king of the Jews come. You need to understand the woman girl was born in Revelation two, and four, twelve and four. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born, to kill him, to kill him. We're back to Matthew 2 and 3. And when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled because he wanted to kill him, the king of the Jews. And all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And he said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for that is, thus it is written in the prophet, who is six, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. You see, that's what the king of the Jews is, Yahushua Hamachia. You need to pay attention. Who was looking for him? Herod. He was what? Grieved. You see that? <laughs> he was troubled. Go to verse 11. And when they were, the, the, verse 12, and being warned of God, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So he sent the, the, um, the, the, the three wise men to, to craftily look, um, reveal the location of your, your Christ. You see that? I want to come and worship him. You see that? So most I say, don't go back to him. Most I tell him, don't go back to him. He's trying to kill him. You need to understand the dragon was still before the woman which was about to deliver the devour a child. You used to kill him. You need to pay attention. Back to Matthew 2 and 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and feet into Egypt. Take your baby Yahushua and run. Here he said, Run. Why? And be there, be thou there until I bring the word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. You see that? The Herod, Herod is who? The Roman Emperor. He said, Emperor. You can kill him. You see that? See, get that child and kill him. You, you need to understand. Because he was killing. Like the doctor was, I went 14, I keep reading. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, all the children of Israel. You see that? Kill them firstborn children. Kill them newborns. And in all the coasts thereof, Kill them newborns on all the coast of the children of Israel. From two years old and under. Kill them. You see that born around that child. Around the time of that child. Kill them all. You need to pay attention. Who's Herod? Roman. The Roman. You need to pay attention. The people of who? The prince of the devil of Satan. You need to pay attention. <laughs> you need to pay attention. According to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Because the children of Israel were the children of God. The people of God. They would sure say what? He had nothing in me. The prince of this world had nothing in me. You need to pay attention. Then was fulfilled with that which was spoken by Jeremiah the, Jer Jeremiah the prophet. In Ramah, there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Racial weeping for children, the children of Israel. You see that? <laughs> the, killing the, the killing the prophet, the killing of the children of Israel. Go back to Revelation 12 and verse 4. And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven, the devil and his fallen angels. This is the, the, the third part of them that revolted. And they cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, the children of Israel. Which was ready to be delivered. You see that Mary to kill him, what to, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So he tried to kill Yahushua and he what? Kill all them children two years and under. And the whole, all Jew, throughout Jerusalem and throughout the coast, the children of Israel. That dragon and devil coming to wage war with the children of Israel. That what Yahushua is telling you. Put in Daniel 9. The most I got is seen in Daniel 9. And after three score and two weeks, Sam Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. He could die for, for himself, but the children of Israel to give them grace to, and, and faith so they could repent. 
And, and after he died, the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. You see that you need to understand. The people of who? Satan. Satan. You need to pay attention. They're going to come and do destroy the sanctuary. Come and kill. Kill and kill and kill. Verse 5, Revelation 12 and 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Did we just read in Matthew 2 and 6. Do you see that? And, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least of the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. You see that? He coming to rule, rule. Yahushua and Shakazu talking about. Where you see that's born king of the Jews. You need to understand. That we talking about. He come, they coming to wage war against the throne of Israel. And kill, try to kill Yahushua. Most I say, well, no, you ain't touching him, you ain't touching my anointed. And the woman fled into the wilderness because they didn't understand the mystery of killing him. You need to understand. He was to give the children of Israel blood, cover them. While in the midst of sin, while he conquered the scattering in the diaspora. And the woman fled into the wilderness, the nation of Israel, where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three square days. See similitude. Children of Israel running, running in the diaspora. Because what? Jerusalem gets sucks and TD. Same way. I mean, the wilderness be right here. It'd be right here. Scattered in this, from St. Eli to now. They pay attention. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought on his angels. So they said Satan and his, the, the mutiny angels was trying to create mutiny in heaven, and, and the battle was going on. And prevailed not. Obviously, they prevailed what? Not. That's why he say, this wait, Luke 4, he tell um, Yahushua, this was delivered into my hand. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. I will give you, bow down and worship me, I give you all the kingdoms that I say. Because the most I cast him down here. Go down there. You want somebody to rule? Go down there and punish the behind. I send them to punish them. The, viola the, the violators. Go and punish them. You need to pay attention. And prevail not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Because you rise up against the Mosai, you get put out. And the great dragon, well, just as you rise up against the Mosai, and he did what? Put you out of Jerusalem. You need to pay attention. <laughs> Go. Time out. And the great dragon was cast out. Because the Mosai is no respecter of persons. And the great dragon was cast out. That who? Great dragon. Was cast out that old serpent from Genesis would seduce Eve. You see, and that the children of Satan, you see, they need to pay attention and call the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. The whole world has been deceived. You see, that nobody, all the thinking is smart, and who thinking is super smart. The whole world deceived. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Satan and his angels. The people of who? The people of the prince shall come. The children of Satan. Yes, they are children of Satan on the earth. You need to pay. They are children of God through Adam, through Seth. To Noah, to Enoch, to Mahali, to, to coming through that lineage. You see that? You need to pay attention to, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, the children of Israel, the children of God, and they are children of the devil. They're not coming through Cain. You see that? You need to pay attention. Cain and the dead, dead progeny get blotted out in the, in the flood, and then they come back through with um, no, um, Ham, <laughs> Ham and, and, and Canaan. The children of Canaan come back again. You, need, you see that? After the flood, children of Canaan. Same Satan seed. Children of the, the prince of the of the world of the air, the prince of the power of the air, the devils, the devil children. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. And but verse nine, and the great dragon was cast out the devil. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out of him. Give him dominion here. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. So after he gave him dominion, what? What happening? Now is come salvation. Your salvation joined now. Your savior is on the way. Because you're given into his hand dominion. And the Mosai said, I'm going to send the Savior for them. You see that? And strength and the kingdom of our God. Because the, the Savior, Hushua Mashiach, is coming to what? Deliver the children of Israel. And, and establish what? The kingdom of God. You need, you need to understand. After this fourth king, beast kingdom. So he's coming to take away power from the prince of the, of the, the, the power of the Savior. That's what he's saying. What? The prince of the, this world is being judged. And the power of his Christ. You see that? The kingdom of God being established by who? The power by Hushua Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast on the devil himself, which accused them before our God day and night. You see that? That's what he's talking about. He's accuser. That's his job. Keep in sin. The gay kill. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. How you overcame the devil? By repenting. Keeping them laws. The blood of the Lamb is a grace. That we see he did not die. He died but not for himself. Daniel 9 and verse 26. And, shall, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off but not for himself. Because he's the blood of the, the Lamb. He became the Lamb. And the blood, what? To cover the children of Israel. Go back to Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That Lamb. You see that the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. He gave us, he protected us with that blood. For what? So the, we could be under grace and faith. You see that? that he made himself one big sacrifice. So we could come, repent and time to repent and come back to the Lord. 
and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the grace that they have, and the faith, and by the word of the testimony. You see, that the, what, what is the word of the testimony? The Lord that is commandments and judgment. You have to keep them. You have to do them while they're under grace. You have to do them while they're under grace and faith. You, you need to pay attention. And they love not their lives until the death. You see that? No, me, 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 myself, and I no more. You see that? It's about loving the most like God. Keeping them commandments. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you. You see that? Destruction. You see that? John the Revelator say what? Destruction to the inhabitants of the earth. You children that dwell in the earth, you children as well as cast out from your heaven into the earth. You say, woe to you, destruction. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. He mad. He coming to destroy and kill, because he knew that he had but a short time. He know that the Savior or his salvation is coming according to verse 10. Yahushua coming. The kingdom of God is coming. And the power of his Christ. Christ is coming to shut him down, to take him out. You need to understand? And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought for the man child. You see that? He persecuted who? Mary. He persecuted who? Is a similitude, the children of Israel. Is that woman with the 12 stars. You see that? The children of Israel. He went after the children of Israel. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is noised for a time. So we are in our wilderness. We are in the wilderness. You see that? You need to pay attention. But the most I what? You could be noised for a time. He's feeding us. That's why we have a, we could have a shelter, a roof over your head. We could have food. You see that? Most I be as clothes. The most I say, I am allowing them. He, the, the, the heathen to punish that punishing you behind to feed you and, and they shall be noise for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent most I say a pastor protecting all of you from him so you can't destroy all of you and the serpent cast out of his mouth water lies and deceit and deception you see that false religion Sunday worship Friday worship as a flood after the woman and that he might cause it to be, to be carried away of the flood you see that in these false institutions they think in the worship in the most high, and in the midst of idolatry and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened the mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of, of his mouth. How did the earth help the woman? Go to Psalms 85. Psalms chapter 85 verse 11. How did the earth help the woman? Psalms 85 and verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth. You see that? Truth, the law of statutes commandment. What is the truth? Psalms 119 verse 141 and verse one, Psalms 119 verse 142 and 151. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and the Lord is truth. You see that? Thou art near unto me, O God, all thy commandments are truth. So the laws and the commandments is what going to help the children of Israel. The earth going to bring what? To help the woman. The, the, the truth, the laws going to come out. The most I say, I'm going to pour out my spirit. I'm going to pour my laws right in the children of Israel's mind and wake them up. You see that? Out of that, that zombie state, or that dead in sin, being dead in sins. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of her mouth. All the lies and the deceits, because the laws of God, the mysteries of the book, is being revealed. And the children of Israel are waking up. Pump. You see that? They're getting up dead from dead and sins. They're becoming enlightened. They're waking up. So it's helping them. You see that? Destroying all the lies of Sunday worship, Friday worship. You see that? All these pagan worship. The, the truth is going to come out. And the dragon was roared to the woman. He mad. He mad with the children of Israel. And went to make war with the remnant of a seed. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahushua. See, so waging what? War. War because the children of Israel are returning into the laws. The laws of the Most High God. You need to pay attention. He was kill we were killing and killing at the beginning, but he's he going on a next level of warfare now. Because we the ones who are what? The remnant of a seed which keep the commandments. The remnant, the elect who are coming back to them laws. He's unknown. Is a, this is deep, deep stuff happening here. Deep stuff. It's deep spiritual warfare because they're, they're battling against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers and spirit, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness and in high places, you need to understand. Is that there's a next level of war going on here? You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. Go to um, go to Luke chapter twenty one and verse twenty. I read Daniel nine and twenty six again. Daniel nine and twenty six. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Yahushua go get put to death. You see that they crucify him. But not for himself. That because they didn't understand why they crucified him. The body say not for this, not for himself. Go to um, First Corinthians, chapter two and verse seven and eight. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world, none of the children of Satan knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Who killed Christ? In the the wicked rulers over Israel, the Pharisees, the scribes. Them, the Sadducees, the rulers of Israel, and their followers, the children of their followers, and the deliverance in the hands of the Romans. You see that? You need to pay attention. They are all children of the prince of this world. You need to pay attention. You have your virgin, right? You need to pay attention. <laughs> they are all of your base. They are Abraham's seed. That way he keeps saying, yes, we are Abraham's seed. But we are Abraham's seed. You need to pay attention. But who are you worshipping? You need to pay attention. <laughs> Go to... Um, 
go back, go to Luke 21, 20. Because you see Daniel say 9 and see, uh, Daniel 9, 26, and after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Titus and Vespasian coming. Titus and Vespasian coming. Go to Luke 21 and verse 20. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. That's where you show one in what he said. When we tell him Matthew 24 and 2, there shall not be left one stone here standing. <laughs> what is he talking about? Luke 21, verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation there is night. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter there. He said, Run, run. When you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, the Roman armies, Titus and Vespa. You see when they come in a circle of it. Know that the desolation day of no, uh, not is nigh. Destruction is coming down. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. The vengeance of the Lord for your violation of his laws. You see that? For, for, for falling to sin. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So you see the natural heathen Gentiles coming and take it on. The Romans, the Romans. The people of who? The people of the prince. Of the, of the people of prince. The people of Satan. You need to pay attention. What Revelation 12 was talking about? The people of Satan. You see that? Herod and the crew that was trying to kill the, the, the king and the Jews. Kill Christ and kill all in train on two years and under. You need to pay attention. This is the Bible, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is the Bible. Daniel 9 and verse 26 again. And the what? And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end shall be with a flood until the end of the war. Desolation are determined. This year they're going to burn it down to the ground. Um, go to Ephesians 2 and 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Ephesians 2 and 2. And you, had he quickened, you children of Israel, who were dead in trespasses and sins. 2 and 1. You see that? Ephesians 2, 1 and 2. You children of Israel were dead in what? Dead in sins. You quicken you or bring you back to life. By what? You're under grace. You repent. Keep the laws. Where in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. A cool, what did the devil say in Luke 4 and 6 to Yahushua? This is delivered into my hand. By the your father, give me this dominion here. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Power. I give anything. Wealth. You see what? Where in time past, you walk according to the course of this world. Is this Satan? Is, you see that? The domain. According to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, he said, your father give me dominion. <laughs> Here, the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, Satan and his children, you see that? Or the children of disobedience, the children who don't want to keep the law, Satan, the fallen under Satan, children, you need to pay attention. Disobedience is what? Obedience is what? Obeying the law. Disobedience is what? Disobeying the law. You need to pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. That's here the Lord. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, that's Ephesians 2 and 3. In the what? Paul, Paul say what? We was the same, doing the same thing. We had all our time, our conversation in time past, in the lust of the flesh. Lust sin, you see that? Sexual lust, fleshly lust, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. You see that? Sexual lust, and of the mind. You see that? Mental lust, and we what? By nature, the churn of wrath, even as others. The churn of the devil, the churn of, the churn of the disobedience, or the churn of the prince of the power of the air. You see that? He was, he was, Paul is saying, I was there too. I was what? As a child of disobedience. You need to pay attention. The turn of Satan. Once you're not keeping God's laws, you're a child of disobedience or you're a child of Satan. You're obeying Satan. You need to pay attention. So you need to what? Repent, come back to the laws and praise one of the remnant that he could keep it. You need to pay attention. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, rarely loved us. Who is Paul talking about? The turn of Israel. He said, I was, we was all there doing the same thing, living like the turn of disobedience. You need to pay attention. For when we were dead in sins, when we were what? Dead in sins. Living after who? The churn of the prince of the power of this earth. The churn of Satan. You need to pay attention. So if you don't want to come out, you belong to him. He have you. And when we were dead in sins, and had quickened us together with Christ, by grace he has saved. That's what the purpose of what? He will be died, but not for himself. Grace. To give you grace to repent. To come back to the law. So he wouldn't be living as though the churn of disobedience in the midst of sin. But dead in trespasses and sin. You need to pay attention. That's what he's saying. For by grace, verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. You see that they love to read that part in that Sunday worship. But they need nothing from verse 1 come down to understand. You can't be living at the train of disobedience and saying by grace are you saved through faith. Paul is just telling you, you have to what? You were dead in trespasses and sin and he quickened you. Quickened you by what? Bringing you back to the law. 
to not live by the train of disobedience and the midst of sin. And the train of what? The prince of the power, the train of Satan. Now we're talking of walking in what? In the lust of your flesh and the lust of your eyes and the lust of your mind. Now we're talking about that. Come away from that. Come back to the law. You need to pay attention. Go back to Daniel 9. Sorry, so Ephesians 6 and 12 first. I almost forget. Ephesians 6 and 12. Read, read from 11. I read from 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be what? Strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Lord starts his commandments and judgment. That's the power of the Most High God. That's his might. Put on the whole armor of God. The what? The whole armor of God. Keep all the laws, statutes, commandments, judgment, testimonies, precepts. Keep them all. That we may be able to stand against the wires of the devil. Because he's what? That deceiver that deceived the whole world. The Revelation 12 and 9. The devil called Satan that deceived the whole world. You will be able to stand against a wild craftiness, a cunning craftiness of him. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He's saying not for battling normal men or regular men. It's not flesh and blood they're dealing with. But what? But against principalities. Is they say that principalities. They say that rulers. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. The what? The rulers of the darkness of this world. The rulers of sin on this world. Or the disobedience of this world. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. Go back to Luke 4 and verse 6. Against what? Spiritual wickedness in high, high places. Luke 4 and 6. 6. And the devil said unto him, Yahushua, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, everything I give you in this kingdom. You see that? For that is delivered unto me. So I am the ruler of the darkness of this world. You need to pay attention now. This earth, this fallen plane, this fallen hell. You see what? It delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. You need to pay attention. Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against power, Satan and his fallen angels. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places, Satan and the fallen angels is we're battling, the children of disobedience. You see that? The prince of the power is here. You need to understand the reading. Go to Daniel 9 and verse 26 again. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off? You're going to die and go back to the, the Father, but not for himself. He didn't die because he, had died. he became the Lamb of God that gave you grace and faith. Faith to repent and come back to keep them laws. And, but not for himself, but for the word, the children of Israel. When you read John 1, 29 and verse 131. He should be made manifest. The Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. And he made manifest to Israel. And the people of the prince, the children of the devil, shall come. Yes, the literal children of the devil, Satan. Literally, what Herod did, what? Live before the woman to kill her in Revelation 12. You see that? To kill Yahushua. You need to pay. Pay attention. When he couldn't get him, he killed all male children from two years and two. You pay attention. Just to get him. The people of... The prince of the power, the children of Satan. Yes, the physical children of Satan. And you, children of who? Disobedience. Who don't want to obey the law? You need to pay attention. Why was he warned with the Pharisees? You need to pay attention because they don't want to do the law. They don't want to do what you tell them to do. They don't want to obey the law. Children of disobedience. You need to pay attention. And the people of the prince that shall come, the natural children of Satan, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And until the end of the world, desolation of the tomb. And so do what? You go on and they're the, the living after them now. And they don't want to come out. That's what Paul and the apostles come to do. That's what Husha come to, come to do. To say, come out from among them. And be separate. Come out from You need to pay attention. Revelation 18 and 14. Come out from her, my people. Revelation 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Come out from among them and be separate. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. You need to pay attention. He said, come out, separate from him. You children of Israel. You leaders, you vanguards, you rulers of the nation. You kings, you princes. You say, come out from among them. They are the natural children of the people of the prince. They are the natural people of Satan. But you, you're making allegiance to them to put the Son of God to death. You need to pay attention. That's what he's telling you. And that's what it could. We come to save all you. We come for all you. And they don't want to listen. They don't want to listen. They say, you blasphemy men. You. you see that? There's no anything under the sun. They're still doing it now. Now, they're still doing it. You see that? Um, and Revelation 9 and 26. And the trees, I mean, Daniel 9 26. And after three score and two weeks, Simon Messiah be cut off. Christ will die, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come, the natural children of Satan, that shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. The Romans, the Romans come and rule. In 78, the Titus verse 16, and destroy the second second of Jerusalem. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and, and until the end, war and desolation are determined. They're going to burn it to the ground. You see, the need to put show one number about in Luke 21 20 to 24. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. He's going to burn and destroy Jerusalem. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. The overspreading of what? Abomination. Sin. Sin and transgression. The one who says, I will destroy it. Even until the consummation. Until the what? The consummation. What do you do with a marriage? When you're married, you see that? You lay together, you consummate the marriage. You see? Even until the what? The consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Until Yahushua come into what? Consummate the marriage with the children of Israel. You see that? Go to Matthew 22. Let me show you something quick. Matthew 22. 
Matthew 22 and verse 1. And Yahushua answered and spake unto them, saying again in parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. The turn of Israel and the, the, the consummation between the marriage between the lamb. The marriage of the lamb is come. That we're talking about. It's a whole parable. That we're talking about. You need to pay attention. It's a marriage. It's a marriage. It's a marriage. So those servants went out in the highways and gathered together all as many as they could, both good and bad, and the wedding was furnished with guests. So he's talking about Yahushua. Go and compel them to come in. Go and compel them. Go and force them to come in. Go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. You see that? The wife is the children of Israel, the woman. That was Revelation 12 talking about the woman that with the, 12, the crown of 12 stars that went to run into the wilderness. You see what? The children of Israel repenting and coming back to the laws. That's what making it making itself ready. We putting on the armor of God. We keeping them laws. And the guys see what? The marriage is come. I'm coming back to get you. I'm coming back to what? To, for your salvation. To deliver you out of the hand of the wicked. Out of the hand of the devil. You need to pay attention. Be care from it dead. Being dead in sin. To put back the laws in your mind and bring it back to life. You see that? You need to understand. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in linen. Clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of sins. You see that? That purity, that white symbolizes the right. You keep in the law. Your righteousness. Of who? Saints. The throne of Israel. Psalm 50 and, 50 and 5. Those that made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. You need to pay attention. Blessed are they who are what? Called unto the Lamb. The, the, mar the marriage. The, the remnant that will repent. <laughs> Come back. Because not everybody going to understand. He said... Do you see what the title of the class is? What? Dead and sins. Those who are going to wake. Those who are going to be what? Quicken. Come back and keep them lost. Who are going to repent. And come back to the laws. That be what he's talking about. Um, Daniel 9 and verse 27 at the end. Even unto the consummation of the marriage. You see that? Coming back to Gehua. Who, who what? Who come back to the laws. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The children of Israel who was scattered desolate. You see that? From 70 80 till now. Scattered in the diaspora. He coming to gather you. He coming for, for his people. He coming for you. You need to pay attention. Go to um, Jeremiah 44. I read in verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 44. Verse 22. Jeremiah 44 and 22. So that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which you have committed. Being what? Burning incense on the queen of heaven. You see that you pay attention. Therefore is your land a desolation. That's why, you see that, they both said, that's why it happened in the Babylon. You're going back in time now, you see that? That's why it happened in the Babylon because of idolatry. That's why your land is a desolation. That's why Nebuchadnezzar come and burn it down and break it down the same way. That was the first destruction of Jerusalem. And an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as, it had, as at this day. Because you have burned incense and because you have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies. Therefore, this evil is happening to you as at this day. You didn't know what he's saying. Because you don't want, do want to do them law. You don't want to do them law. Jump to verse 25. Thus said the Lord of, of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven. You pay attention. You see what we're doing that thing. They would say, tell him, Jeremiah, we ain't listening to the Lord. We ain't listening to the Lord. We're doing that thing. We're doing that. Go to Matthew chapter 8 and verse 5 to 22. Matthew chapter 8, I read in 5 to 22. Matthew 8 and 5 through 22. Matthew 8 and 5. And when Yahushua was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at the home sick of the palsy. Grievously tormented, and Yahushua said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. He said, What? Lord, you are worthy to come in my house, my, my house, but just speak, and he will go, he go, he go be healed. That's what? Faith, faith, faith. You need to pay attention. For I am a man under authority. He said, What? I am in charge of people, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goes, I have power. That's what he's telling him. And to and and until and, and and another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he do it. So that we tell you, Husha, we know who you are. That we say, we, I acknowledge who you are. You have the authority, you have power. Just as I have physical power here, he say, I know you, I know you have power, you're the son of God. I know you could do it. You could you could command him to heal and that we telling him. I have faith, I have faith, you can do it. Just as they obey me. 
When Yahushua heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Very I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. He said, Them three children, not in Israel. He was in what Capernaum up in Galilee. He said, not, not in Galilee. He said, Not in Jerusalem I went. Hey, am I in fine faith like this? No, not in Israel. You see that? Where was the Pharisees and them base? The main base was down there. You see that by the temple. But you know, man, mm, them have no faith. That, that, this man, wow, that's what he's saying. He believed in me. He said, you know, you the son of God. He said, I just give my, my, my officers orders and they do it. You just get, tell them he just heal them. Heal my child. He, heal my servant. That's what he's saying. I good. You don't have to come by me. That's what he's saying. He said, well, wow, that's some faith. And I said unto you, that many shall come from the east. Yeah, we shall say what? Many shall come from the east and the west. And shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. He said, many will come. You see that? But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. Them, in, them vanguards, them rulers. You see that? Oh, in, in Israel, that we talking about? The Pharisees, the leaders, the vanguards, the rulers. Because they will not have faith in me. They don't believe. They don't believe as the Son of God. That we say. But this man, no. He said, but people will come from what? All the, and they're going to get immortality. They're going to repent from all over the diaspora. Let me say, but what? But them, but the children of the kingdom, who I came unto, John 1 and, and John 1 and 12. Why is he saying? He came unto his own and his own received him not. I went to the leaders, the Pharisees, the rulers, the vanguards. He to, they, they, they rejected him. It's not all the people who reject Yahushua. The Pharisees, the vanguards, and the followers. They need to pay attention. Back to Matthew 8 and verse 12. But the children of the kingdom, those Pharisees, rulers, vanguards, you see that all the leaders of the nation shall be cast out into outer darkness. You see, I'm going to, going to put to death. There shall be weeping and national teeth. That we tell them, they ain't getting the kingdom because they don't acknowledge the Son of God. They blaspheming against God. And Ahusha said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou believe, so it be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the same, 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 same hour because he had faith. Ahusha understood he had made some serious faith. Go on, go on, your, child, your servant good. <laughs> we see it. Your children, your, your, um, your, your servant good. Read verse 12 again. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. But you get destroyed. Destroyed. In the midst of what? Sin. Sin. Destruction. Verse 14. And when Yahushua was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand. And he did what? He touched her hand. He touched her hand. And the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto him. So she went and take care of him, feed him. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and cast out the spirits with his wood. And he cast out what? The spirit with his wood, with the laws of God. That's what's going to bring him out dead from dead in sins. Being dead in sin, the laws of God is going to revive you. Truth shall come out of the earth. Psalm 35, 11. The truth is the word, the Lord of God, the Lord of statutes, testimonies. You're going to understand it. The flood that the devil, the lies and deceits and crafting that the devil stole their mind with, stole their spirit with, the truth or the laws of God is going to cast out them lies. It's going to cast out them lies. It's going to drag you, bring you back from a dead state, your spiritually dead state, to bring you back to alive. You see that? Spiritually alive. And what? And when he was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils because we did not delusion. We believe in all these lies and deceits and deceptions. You see that? I'm making my break. I do this. Everything is I and I and I and I. I good. I smart. You see that? I accomplished this. I achieved that. And what? And he cast out the spirits with his word. Them demons that lies that have been that have been taught and programmed with, going to law is going to cast it out. You're going to nothing goes through. <laughs> you're like you'll sleep and wake up. The deep sleep. You're going to wake up in the dead state. And he cast out the spirits. By which is with the laws of God and heal all our sick. So we're mentally sick, dead in sins. They're going to be healed by what? The laws of God by applying the laws to their life. You need to understand. This is the healing. What Christ is doing. He, to pay. he was no physical doctor. He was no physician. He was healing them with the laws. They would repent and come back to the laws and they were waking up out of their dead sleep, out of the sleep. <laughs> talking zombie state, a walking dead state. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities. And bear our sicknesses. And when Yahushua saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. You see what? The crowd swelling. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee where the servant thou goeth. You see what? Yahushua, come in wherever you're going. And Yahushua said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man had not where to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. He said, Let me go and bury my father. And Yahushua said unto him, Follow me. He said, Keep them commandments. Go back to your father. He said, Keep them commandments. Follow me. And let the dead bury the dead. He said, Leave them. Them in the midst of sin, they don't want to repent. Let them take care of one another. That's what he said. If they don't want to repent and keep my laws, did I just make that up? Let them bury one another. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 46. Why did he talk to the people? Behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. So he was talking to the people and his, his mother and his, his physical mother and, and physical brethren, brothers and sisters. Came and want to talk to him. 
Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. So they say, Yahushua, your mother and them outside. Mary and them, and the children and your brothers and sisters outside. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? He said, What? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Towards who? His disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. He's them disciples, that's my mother and my brethren. What did he mean? For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. What is the will? Psalm 40 verse 8. Psalm chapter 40 verse 8. He said, whoever do the will of my Father, that's my mother and my brother and my sister. Psalm 40 verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So Yahushua said what? Who's, back to Matthew 12 and verse 56. For whosoever shall do the will or the laws of my Father, of Mosai, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. You need to pay attention. He said, that's my earthly mother and earthly brother. But if they're keeping them laws, what have I to do with them? That's what he said. If they're keeping them laws, they have, I have no part in them. You need to pay attention. He said, did he just say that? He said, my disciples, do them, my, them, them, my mother and my brother is my them disciples who keep in my law, who follow in me. That we say, follow me, who follow in me. Go back to Matthew chapter 8 and verse 22. And we just said unto him, follow me, keep them laws and commandments, do the will of God. You need to understand. And let the dead bury the dead. Let the who? Dead bury the dead. What is he talking about? Go, to, go back to Ephesians 2. Let the dead bury the dead. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you are he quickened who bring them to the will of the law. Who were dead in trespasses and sins? Who were in the midst of sin? Violation, violation. You see that? Living after the churn of disobedience. Going after the lust of the flesh and the lust of the desires of the flesh of the mind. Living in the midst of sin. That we're talking about. So if they're not keeping them law, then you and my brethren, you and my friends. They need to pay attention. You and my mother, you and my father, you and my brethren. You need to pay attention. This is spiritual work. Go back to Matthew 8 and 22. And Yahushua said unto them, Follow me. Keep them laws, that is commandments, and let the dead bury the dead. Them who dead in sins, let sinners bury sinners. That we're talking about. You don't want to keep by laws. Let them deal with one another. Did, did, yeah, yeah, he just said that, did he? Yes, he did. Follow me. Follow me. <laughs> Go to um, yeah, that, 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 that. Go to um, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 1. Revelation 3 and 1. Revelation 3 and 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, what does he mean by let the dead bury the dead? And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These things saith he, that are the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works. And thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. He said, you're living, physically alive, but spiritually dead. Because you see that you're in the midst of sin still. You're in the midst of sin still. First Timothy 5 and 6. You're in the midst of sin, sin still. You're still in the midst of sin. You're living, you're physically alive, but spiritually dead. First Timothy 5 and 6. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. If she liveth after loss, loss, loss. You see that? You, you need to understand. Fulfilling your loss. Fulfilling your pleasure. You are dead while you live it. You are spiritually dead, physically alive, but you're spiritually dead. Let me see, and you can't deal with you. You need to pay attention. <laughs> Go to Matthew, um, Matthew 22, verse 23 to 33. Matthew 22, verse 22 to 33. Matthew 22 and 22. When they had heard these words, they, they marveled and left him and went away. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and ask him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, he died, having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise also the second, and the third, and, and, and unto the seventh. So each brother does die, and die, and, 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 the, and the other brother to take up seed, had to take up the wife. That was the law. Unto the last of all, also the woman died. So she eventually died after the seven brother died. Seven. So seven sibling husband she had, and, and then all died, and she died eventually. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. They all married her. Whose wife she could be in the resurrection? You see that? So they understood the resurrection. Regeneration. Yahushua answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. He said, You, you simple as hell. You don't, miss, you don't understand what the Bible is talking about. He said, But who go hash in the resurrection? He said, You do, you, 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 you do err. You don't understand. You're void of understanding. Why? For in the resurrection or the, or the regeneration, they neither marry. Why? No are given in marriage. There's going to be no marriage. You see that? No marriage in the kingdom. So I will get my Lord in the kingdom. You see that? You've been taught lies and deceit and deception. For in the resurrection or regeneration, they neither marry. No are given in marriage. But are as the angels of God in heaven. You're going to become an angel. You see what? What the heck are you talking about married for? To do what? You're an angel. You're you immortal. You see what? You're an angel. In the resurrection, they neither married nor given in marriage, but as the angels of God in heaven. You're immortal. That we talking. You need to pay attention. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, 
Have you not read which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The ones who in trespasses and sin. You say, I'm not the God of the what? Sinners. Sinners, sinners. You need to repent. You have to repent and come back to the laws. And when the multitude heard, heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. They were what? Astonished. What did he just say? The, the, the mouth dropped. You see that you need to understand. Go to 1 John 3. I read in first verse 1. Go down. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Go down. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth not us, because it knew him not. You see that? Because what? He did in sins. He says, what kind of love the most I have for we? That we call the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not appear yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear on earth, who shall come? We shall be like him. You see that? What? When he returned, come back as a what? As a God. We shall be like him. Do you see what? In, in, um... For in the Matthew 22 and 30, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but as the angels of God in heaven. Go back to John 3 and 2. Beloved, we are now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. We don't know yet, but we, but we know that when he shall appear, who shall come back as a God? He said, Because I'm meeting on as a man, I'm going to come back. We shall be like him. Why? We're going to be as angels, and we shall see him as he is, as a God, as an angel. You need to pay attention. That we say, saying. John saying what? How are you going to see might as an angel? Verse 3. For every man that had this hope in him purified himself even as he is pure. To see him as an angel or to become as an angel, to be able to see Christ as he is, you have to purify yourself from the lust, from the sins of this world, from the transgression of this world, from the violation of God's laws. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. You see that? From violating God's laws. You have to what? purify yourself from violation of breaking God's laws. You have to repent and come back to the law while you're under grace and faith. You need to pay attention. For sin is the transgression of the law. That would be double John the Revelator saying. That's the big message that you're missing. You need to purify yourself to become as Christ. To see Christ when you come back. To be an angel as him. You, see, you need to understand the resurrection. To get in the resurrection of you as the angels. You have to keep them laws. Repent. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. That was the purpose of Yahushua. Daniel 9 and, 9 and 26 say what? He died not, but not for himself. You need to understand. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 26. Daniel 9 and 26. We read it earlier. Daniel 9 and 26. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. You see that? Go back to um, 1 John 3. And verse 5, and you know that he was manifest, manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. He didn't die for himself. It's to take away the sin of the children of Israel. You need to pay attention. This is John the Revelator speaking here. Whoso abideth in him, sineth not. Whoso, if what, follow, what did he say? Follow me. Keep in him laws. Let the dead bury the dead. And every man that... Verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So the sin is breaking God's laws. Sin is violation of God's laws. That's what we say, the violation of God's laws. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, Yahushua, and in him is no sin. You see that he, because he came and he walked to show us how to walk. Be followers of me as I am of Christ. That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11. Be and 1. Be followers of me as I am of Christ. Do as I do. Um. First Corinthians 11. And one, be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. That we're talking about. Be follow, follow Christ. Um, go back to First John three, and six. Whosoever violate in him sinned not. Whosoever sinned had not seen him, neither known him. So who keep violating our law? He's that they don't know Christ. They don't. You see that? I know God. I know. You know the Bible says. John the Revelator say. Revelator say. If you don't want to keep them commandments, you don't know Christ. You don't either see him, nor know him. You see that? Because if you wait him from the beginning, you will obey his voice. That we saying, you will hear my sheep, hear my voice, and they follow me. They're going to follow me in what? Not walk after him. Do the commandments. They're going to do the law I tell you to do. That we telling my sheep, hear, understand, and they will follow. They will do. You need to pay attention. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Righteousness, Deuteronomy 6.25, is the commandments. It shall be all righteousness if you observe to do all the commandments of God. You need to understand. He is righteous, the man who keeping the commandments. So you can't be able to say, I'm righteous, I, and in the midst of sin, he kills yourself. He that committed sin is of the devil. This is the Bible. For John the Revelator says, if you keep violating God's laws and you don't want to repent, you have the devil. What did he say? Dead in sins, right? Yeah. He that committed sin or keep breaking God's laws or willfully breaking God's laws is of the devil. 
the train of who? Disobedience of the train of the prince of this world. You need to understand. That's why they gravitate into the hidden. Then gravitate into the natural train of Satan. You see, because what? He that committed sin or transgressed the laws of the devil, you belong to them. You see that you're giving, this, you, you, you're giving the allegiance to them. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. This is the purpose of Christ coming and walking with You see that too, but that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why he didn't understand. But he coming and shedding his blood, the devil signing that warrant. That's what you see. He come back to, I come back as I go out to take him behind all. <laughs> you need to understand. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. He cannot sin. For his seed remained in him because you have been with him from the beginning. You have a holy seed. You see that the remnant, the elect, you will come back because the law is in you. You need to understand. He just fell. But you will come back to it, the elect. For his seed remained in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. You were with him from the beginning. That we're talking about. You will come back to the law. In this, the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. The children of God or the elect who was with him from the beginning will come back to the laws. No problem. They ain't coming kicking screaming. They will willingly come back to the laws. <laughs> come back and go to um, John chapter 14 and verse 15 and verse 27. And you also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. You will come back to them laws. You will obey because you were with me from the beginning. You need to understand. Back to First John 3 and verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness, who don't want to keep the commandments, is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. You see that? Because it's the love of God that we keep the commandments. Loving every neighbor as itself is applying the law to one to another. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Cain was a child of Satan. Yes, a child of Satan. And slew his brother. Wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Because he was a child of the devil. You need to pay attention. He was a child of Satan. Why is he not in the lineage of Adam? You need to pay attention. Adam, Seth. This is the lineage, lineage in Genesis 5. Adam, Seth. You need to pay attention. Cain is nowhere there. Pay attention. Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Because the usual one is not dead in sins. You see, that? So if you're dead in sins, you see, well, you're the child of the devil and he willfully don't want to repent. You're hearing you're the child of Israel. You're hearing, you're watching, you're watching the videos, you're watching the teaching, you're watching better preaching, you see, and you don't want to repent. You don't want to come back to the laws. The Bible says that. In this, the children of God are manifest, 1 John 3 and 10, and the children of the devil. Who want to follow the, the natural children of Satan? You see that? Whosoever does not rise, says, is not of God. The, ones who, the children of Israel who don't want to keep them laws. You see what? It's not of God because they sell your soul to the devil. You need to pay attention. <laughs> and neither he that loveth not his brother. Who is that Israel he talking to? For this is the message that he heard from the beginning that he should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, a child of Satan, and slew his brother. That's why he killed him. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. He had the, 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 the murderer from the beginning. This was his father. And his brother's righteous. Abel was what? A child of God. You see that? Child of God. Children of God, child of the devil. You need to pay attention. That's what we're talking about. You need to pay attention to what the Bible is saying. God is not the God of the, the dead, but the God of the living. The ones who are going to keep them lost. That's what we're talking about. You hear these parables and understanding what he's talking about. Go to Proverbs 7 and 2. God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. That's Matthew 22. He said, but I'm the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Go to Proverbs 7 and 2. What's, why does he mean God of the living? Proverbs 7 and 2. Keep my commandments and live. You need to pay attention. Keep my commandments and live. So if you're breaking my commandments, you're the dead. Go back to Matthew 22 and verse 32, 32 again. I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Jacob. God is not the God of the dead. The men who are dead in trespasses and sin or sinning, but of the living. Who's going to be keeping the law? Who is the ones that are living? Proverbs 7 and 2. Keep my commandments and live. The ones who, and the laws and my laws are applied. The ones who keep in the commandments and the law. I am their God. <laughs> they were children of God and children of the devil. First John 3 and 10. You need to pay attention. It is the children of God that manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Who breaking all laws, who dead in sins, is not of God, is of the devil. You need to pay attention. And who keeping God laws, keeping my commandments and live, and the laws that apply the eye, is what? I am their God. Because God is not the God of the dead, the ones who sin, who willfully sin, but of the living. Who can't come out? The ones who come out to the law, I am your God. You need to pay attention. I ain't coming to save no sinners. That's what the most I say. You're going to repent. I come to call sinners to repentance, but if you don't repent when I come back, you're going to get put to death. That's what they don't teach you. You're not teaching it. But, um, go 
Baruch 4 and 1. Read Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. Baruch 4 and 1. I'm not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of God, and the Lord will endure it forever. God loves will endure forever. All that I keep it shall come to life. Because if you're dead in sins, you, if you're not keeping God's laws, you're dead in sins. Now we're saying, so if you keep God's laws, you will come to life. You'll come alive. Quicken. You see that? Yeah, the quicken you dead in trespasses and sin. All that I keep it, keep God's commandments and law, will come to life. You'll become alive from the dead seed. But such as leave it shall die. You're going to be dead in sins. You need to understand. If you're not keeping the laws of God, you're dead in sins. You need to pay attention. Turn dear Jacob and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the life thereof that thou mayest be illuminated or brought back to life or quickened. You need to understand. He's not the God of the dead but of the living. The ones who keep in the law and the commandments. That's what I'm telling you. If you sin, you're worshiping the devil. <laughs> you're worshiping the devil. Simple. Go to um, Revelation 18 and 4. Revelation 18 and 4. Revelation chapter 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Come out from among the children of the, the devil, the children of disobedience, the children of the prince of the power of the state, the children of Satan. Come out of among them. Stop following them. If, but if you're not keeping my laws, you're following them. Or you're doing that, you're in violation. You have to come out, separate yourself from them. That's what Moses is saying. 2 Corinthians 6 17. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 6 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Stipulation. You see that? Verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You see that who want to continue will, will, willfully sinning? Don't be unequally yoked together with them. You see what the man said, Yahushua? Let me go. Matthew 8 and 22. Let me go and bury, bury, bury my father. Christ said, What? Let the dead bury the dead. Unbelievers. You see, let unbelievers bury unbelievers. Forget them, but keep, keep coming. Keep, you better keep stay with my, my company and keep them laws <laughs> that we're telling you. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? Deuteronomy 6 25, the ones who keep in the commandments with the ones who break in the commandments. Paul said, What fellowship all you have? You see that way, Yahushua say, My mother and my brethren, they that keep, do the will of God, who keep the commandments of God. That's the same as my brother and, and my mother. You need to pay attention. And what communion had light with darkness? And what concord had Christ with Belial? What, what, what agreement had Satan and the devil? None. Or what part had he that believed with an inferior? The ones who are going to keep the law, believe in the law, and the one who are going to continue in the same sin, dead in sins? There's no concord. There we see. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? You see that? The children of God keeping the laws of God with idolaters. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Because the God of the living, who keeping the law, of his commandments. You see that? Wherefore, come out from among them, the ones who are in the midst of sin, or dead in trespasses and sin, who don't want to keep the law. Then we say, come out from among them and be separate. Separate from them, because what? Said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. He said they are unclean, they're in the midst of sin. And I will receive you. You see that? You have to separate from sinners. You need to pay, you pay attention. That's what the Bible saying. Yeah, the same Bible they love, right? <laughs> Second Peter chapter 2, I read in verse 1. Second Peter 2 and 1. Second Peter 2 and 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, and who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the, Lord, denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow the pernicious ways. You see that? Pernicious ways. And by reason of way, oh whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. The, 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 the deceiving the behind, you see that? Deceitfully teaching the laws of God. You see that? And keeping it still in sin. It's a deceptive doctrine. The way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You see that? They blaspheme in God in a subtle way, a sly way. You think you're learning in Christ. You think you're repenting. You think you're in the, the church of God. You see that? They think you're worshiping the Messiah, but you're in the midst of sin still. You're deceiving it behind. You see that? Punish us with. And what? And true covetousness shall they with feigned words, lying and deceiving words, make merchandise of you. You see that? They're all about making wealth of you. You see that? Who judgment now a long time? Linger it not, and their damnation slumbered not, because they were they're naturally what following dead in trespasses and sin. Turn of God, turn of the devil. If you're not keeping the laws, you're living as a turn of disobedience, but turn of the devil. You need to pay attention. That's what he's talking about. Um, go, go to um, Luke chapter. Give me Matthew ten first. Matthew ten and verse. Matthew 10 and verse, I read, um, let me read from one good one, Matthew 10 and 1. And he called unto him and said unto his twelve disciples, 
And he called unto him his twelve disciples, sorry, and he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You see, that's sick in my mind. Sick in the mind and the body. Now, the names of the twelve apostles are these, because everything is spirits. You see, whether your body is sick, your body is lame, whatever, it's all spirits. You need to pay attention. Now, the name of the twelve apostles are these. The first Simon, who is called Peter and Andrew's brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John's brother. So, he's the so twelve disciples, he said. This was five. These twelve were who shall send forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Don't go to the northern kingdom, he's talking about. Don't go to the northern kingdom. Yet, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go to the southern kingdom. Go, into, go down in Jerusalem and deal with them. Now he's saying, Go down and deal with them in the, by the temple, them Pharisees and them vanguards and them. He said, Go deal with them. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4 17. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. You see that? That we tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4 17. What was Christ's ministry? From that time, Yahushua began to preach at the sea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 2 and verse. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 2. I read 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go back to Matthew 10 and verse 7. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go and preach the same repentance. Tell them repent. Stop sinning. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely have received, freely give. Cast out devils. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead by what? Telling them to repent. Come back to the laws. That's how good that demons go leave it. That's how them spirits go leave it. Go leave it. That's what he's talking about. Heal the leprosy go be healed. You raise the dead. Who dead in trespasses and sin? Raise them by the laws. They go repent. Come back to the laws. Cast out devils by what? Application of the laws. Freely you have received from me, I instruct you, freely, freely give. Don't charge nobody for it. That's what we're telling them. You see that? Provide neither gold, nor script, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey. They say, don't go with nothing. Just go. Faith. That's what we're telling them. And into whatsoever city or tongue you shall enter, inquire who in it who is worthy, and thereby tell you go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. They don't want to hear you. They're rejecting you. You see that? Keep it moving. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or that city, shake off the dust of your feet. You see what? Shake off the dust of your feet. You need to pay attention. You see what? Just keep it moving. For I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So anybody that reject the teaching of Christ, you see what? It will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than you in the day of judgment. You need to pay attention. Just shake off it. Just, just go and prophesy. Don't you tell Ezekiel, give them warning from me. That's all they have to do. Just go and teach. How we say it will be what? More tolerable. Go to Mark 6 and 10. He says, shake off the dust of your feet against them. Mark 6 and 10. What does he mean by shaking off the dust of your feet? Mark chapter 6 and verse 10. And he said unto them, In whatsoever place you enter into an house, there abide till you depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. You need to pay attention. You see what? A testimony against them. For we let's see unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. You see that when you want, you, you, they reject you and you turn your back on them, you see what? Their judgment is going to be worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. So anybody rejecting the truth and Sodom and playing, you see that the most I see, you see I'm going to judge you behind. Back to Matthew 10 and verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as doves. Beware of, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. In their what? Synagogues. Who was he talking to the, about the Pharisees? You see that the vanguard, the rulers in the synagogues, the sanctuary, the schools. You see that. This you pay attention. And he shall be brought before governors and kings for my 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 sake for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. You see that the same thing. For when they deliver you up, take note of how or what you shall speak. For it shall be given you the same or what you shall speak. That we talking about. You see, don't worry about them. <laughs> don't worry about them. Just you go and teach. They're in the midst of sin, repent. Tell them repent. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. You say what? For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. So you say when you go in and testifying, the spirit of the most high is what's speaking in you. You say you and physically speaking, there's a spirit of the most high speaking through you. Now you, you say, the apostles of God and the prophets of God, of God, not of Baal or the devil or the deceitful prophet, the spirit of God speaks through them. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. Because why? They don't want to repent. One want to keep the laws, one want to keep the laws. You see that? They're going to hate your guts. And the child and the and the brother to death, and the father the child, because the child is keeping the law, the father is going to go against him. You see that? That was the Pharisees of doing with Christ, delivering up to death. You need to pay attention. Children of God, children of who? The devil. Even of your own brethren, you need to pay attention. Who keeps the law and who don't keep the law? And the children shall rise up against their parents. Why? 
So if the parents keep in the Lord, the children want to be wicked as hell in the midst of sin, dead in their sins, need to pay, and cause them to be put to death because they keep in the law. And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. He said endure it. Because why? It's to act two and one. So act two and one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, if you repent and come out of the world and come to keep them laws, prepare thy soul for temptation. You will be tried. The devil will come at you. Was he tempting, tempting Christ? Yes. Set thy heart aright. Keep the laws. Let's keep the laws and constantly endure, endure the temptation and the persecution. And make not haste in time of trouble. Don't run. Don't, don't run back. Don't go back to them. There we say. Cleave unto him. Stay in them laws and depart not. Don't leave them laws. Don't leave them. Keep the laws. To hell with them. That thou mayest be increased at thy last. And they say, you're missing the Thanksgiving turkey. You see, you're missing the Christmas dinner. You see that? To hell with them. What service brought upon thee, take cheerfully. You see that? Smile at them. You see that? Just take it cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to always. When you lost your job, when things come hard, when you're going to try it. Go up to Job. Yes, yes, you're going to try it. See, he said, just enjoy it. Keep them laws. Don't turn back. Don't give up. For gold is tried in the fire. You are the gold. You are the gold that will be tried by the devil. You're going to let them to try you. An acceptable man in the fullness of adversity. You are the elect. That we're talking about. You must go through it. Go back to Matthew 10 and verse 22. And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Keep going. And when they persecute you in the city, flee into another. For very I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man come. You shall say, they're going to persecute you, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, because one, the brother will deliver the brother, the father will deliver the child, they'll be saying, because the children of God, children of the devil, some of the children, they'll be, oh, your brethren, they're going to keep the law. Who killed me? They'll be saying, you shall say, who killed me? Who, 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 you shall say, who nailed me to the cross? The children of Israel, the brethren, they said, deliver them to, deliver them to the, the heathen, because they couldn't execute, they didn't have the authority to kill at that time. They could have beat you behind, they could have whatever, but Deliver him. The, the Romans had to carry the execution. They deliver him. You see that? That we're talking about. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. He say, what I go through, you won't go through. That we're telling him. Because you're the elect. You're the goal. It is not for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house, bears him up devil, or lord of the flies, how much more shall they call him of his house? They will call the devil the same way. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. He said, going to reveal all the, the, the secrets. But... And here that shall not be known. I will reveal all the secrets. They say all the sins. What I tell you in darkness, who's doing it? You shall say, I will reveal it to you. What I tell you in darkness, when you're sleeping up on your bed, that speak in the light. You say, well, go and reveal it. Go and go give them warning from me. And what I you hear in the air, what I reveal the mystery, preach in the house of go and throw them the transgression. You see that? Go and give them warning from me. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Because they're dead in sins, you have to go and give them warning from me. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Don't fear them. They could only kill your physical flesh. But fear, yeah, who fear the most who can kill your body and destroy your soul. You need to understand. That's what he's telling them about. Um, with the 32, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, who can testify me before men, him will I confess also before my father which is in them. Yeah, we shall say I will certify you in the, in the kingdom. He put it in the work. He's doing it. He's doing He's teaching just like me. Brave and bold like me. He said, and he's going and show them the transgression. He's going to rebuke and reprove and correct them to get them to repent. He will forbear. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is them. So who's fearful to go and teach? Who's fearful to go and say, Thus said the Lord, and rebuke and reprove and correct? He said, Who's going to deny, deny you and come in my kingdom? Think that I am come to send peace on earth. He said, I am come to send no peace on earth. Do you see that? Let there be peace on earth. That would be the teaching from kids. <laughs> they are going to be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Yahushua said, Think not I come to send peace on earth. There's going to be no peace on earth. When I, but until I come and establish my kingdom. You see that? But a sword, right? And all in this sinful kingdom is this destruction here. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and a daughter against a mother and a daughter in law against a mother in law. Why? Some will keep my law, some will keep my law. Children of God, children of the devil, you have your own brethren who will fully follow in the children of disobedience or the prince of the power of the earth, the fallen Satan. You didn't pay attention. You didn't keep in my law. And a man's foes, a man what? Foes or enemy shall be there of his own household, of your own brethren. That we're talking about. This is like Bees Abraham's seed. That will keep our seed, keep telling him, We be Abraham's seed. We be Abraham's seed. And he said, Yes, I know it's Abraham's seed, but why are you trying to kill me? Because a man foes, they are my enemy, shall be there of his own house. So what, who put him to death? Yes, who deliver up, deliver up to, 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 to get put to death? His own brethren. Are we talking about? He that love it, they do dead in, church, dead in sins. They wouldn't understand. I came unto him as his own to give them the kingdom. And we say, I come to give all of the kingdom. <laughs> and he kill me? You need to understand. A man foes shall be there of his own house. So that we telling you, warning you. 
He that love it father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. If you love that father or mother who don't want to keep them laws more than me, he say, you ain't worthy than me. That's the dead. Let the dead bury the dead. You see that? Them sinners, let sinners deal with sinners. That we saying. Come out from among them and be separate. He that loveth father or mother, if they in the midst of sin, more than me is not worthy of me. What did he say about his own father and mother? Go to Matthew 22 again. Sorry, Matthew 4, um, 12. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 48. And he answered and said unto him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? Because they say, Mother and your brethren outside so want to talk to you, Yahushua. He said what? But he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. You are my mother and you are my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven, the same is my brother, mother and sister. Who do the laws of God. You see, that's my mother, father and sister. You need to understand. Go back to Matthew 10 and verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. You see that? More than keeping my commandments. They don't want to keep the commandments. You ain't worthy of me. That we talking about. You want to hang out with them? You want to go and bury them? You want to go and eat Thanksgiving dinner? You want to go for Christmas dinner? You want to hang out? Make friends and your righteous mama? You see, yeah, deceit. That's talking about money, man. Unrighteous mama is money. You see, that we talking about. The, you see what they love father or mother? You see, they want to keep going with visiting their father. You want to keep going and spending time with their mother. Who don't want to keep them laws? You see what? He that loveth father or mother more than me. You want to keep, you see that? Kind your father and mother, wherever you're going with you. You see that? And they're not keeping them laws? He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. You also say you're not worthy of me. You ain't getting no kingdom. <laughs> Once they ain't keeping them laws, you have to come up from among them and be separate. And touch not the unclean thing. They're, they're unclean. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see that? You want to keep going and visit him a son? Go visit him a daughter to go and see them grandchildren. You see that? You see what? You're not worthy of me. You ain't coming in. You see that? I never knew you. Never knew. You need to understand. Go with um, Sirach. Sirach um, 16 and 1. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children, neither delight in ungodly sons. <laughs> you need to understand this in the Bible. He said, Don't desire to be around among unprofitable children who not keeping the law, and, de and neither delight in ungodly sons who not keeping the law. Though they multiply, rejoice not in them. Do they make in what? Children, rejoice not in them. Don't rejoice in them, grandchildren, neither. He said, If they're not keeping the law, Get what? Except the fear of the Lord be with them. Except they're keeping them commandments and laws. You see that? You understand? Trust not thou in their life. Neither respect their multitude. Neither their, 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 their children. You see that? Don't respect them, nor the children if they're not keeping the law. For one that is just is better than a thousand. And better it is to die without children than to have them that are ungodly. Wow. So I see what? One that's keeping a law is better than a thousand and the wicked as hell in the midst of sin. You need to understand. Pay attention. Go back to Matthew 10. You see, who should I start talking? He's the Son of God to come and deliver this. They're all saying the same thing, same message throughout the Bible. 30, verse Matthew 10 38. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. You see that? And he that loves his son or daughter more than me, he ain't worthy of me. You see that? If they miss a sin, that's what I'm talking about. Cut them off. Come out from among them and be separate. That we're talking about. He that finds his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall, shall, shall find it. He that wants to let me go bury my father. You see that? You mean you're holding on to your whole life. Yeah, we, let me go look for my mother. You see, I'm going to look for my father. I'm going to look for my, my son. I'm going to look for my grandchildren. And in the midst of sin and not keeping them laws, he that finds his life, you want to hold on to it, shall lose it. You'll get put to death. Are you, about? you see what? You, because you mix it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Who cut them off? You see that? Lose his whole life. The old friends, the old wicked mama, the old wicked papa, the old wicked brother, sister, the old wicked grandchildren, who don't want to keep them laws. You bring the truth to them and they don't want to repent. He said, <clears throat> he that loses his life for my sake, who cut them off or change, shall find it. You get immortality of the kingdom. That we're talking about. You need to understand. He that receive it, you receive it me. And he that receive it me, receive it him that sent me. You see that? So he that will hear you and do and follow, God, you will also say, he receive me. And receive it what? The, the Father. You need to understand. Because you come in. Is representative of me, you're a messenger of mine, or ambassador for me, and I'm, I'm ambassador for the Most High. You need to understand. <laughs> you need to pay attention. And whoso he that receiveth a righteous man, a man, a lawkeeper, in the name of a righteous man, keeping the law, shall receive a righteous man reward, a lawful reward. You got immortality, the kingdom of heaven. That we're talking about. The kingdom of heaven is for you. Go, back, um, go to Luke 12, 51 to 53. Luke 12, 51 to 53. You see that? Yeah, we shall do it. Luke 12, 51 to 53. Suppose ye that I'm come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. He said, I ain't come to bring no peace on earth, I come to bring division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided. Three against two and two against three. Three keeping the laws, two keeping the laws. Two keeping the laws, three keeping the laws. So, war, division. 
The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father. The mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother. And the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Some one keeping the law, one keeping the law. Whoa, that is a friction. Micah 7 and 6. Friction, 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 friction. Micah 7, um, 7 and verse 6. Micah 7 and 6. For the son dishonoreth the, the father, and the father riseth up against the mother, and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Where did Christ get that from? Where is he quoting? Micah 7 and 6. You see, that's what we're talking about in the New Testament. The New Testament is... You, you did not need it. Everything in the New Testament is being referenced in the Old Testament. You're, they're talking about the same Bible. He said that the men of your own house is your own house. So your enemies are the men of your own house. Because one keeping the law, you keeping the law, they will hate you God for keeping the laws. They will hate you for doing the right thing, for being righteous, for wanting to eat healthy foods. For wanting to eat lawful foods, they will hate your guts. You see that? They will hate you. <laughs> you need to pay attention. Go to um, 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And we almost there. And 9. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Don't keep them company with fornicators. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then you must needs go out of the world. If you keep a company with them, Paul say what? i got to put you out of the church. If you keep, why? But now I have written unto you, not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, he say your own brother. You see that? If any one of your brothers be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer. You see that? If you willfully want to break the laws of God, and not repenting, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one, no, not to eat. He said, don't even have a meal with them. Did we, what, did we just read it in Micah 7 and 6? Yes. A man's enemy shall be the devil's own also. Yes, Matthew 10, 34. Christ said, yes. Same thing, mother against brother, brother against sister. Luke 12, division. That we say. Paul said the same thing, yes. If any one of them wanted, don't want to repent and keep the laws, he said, what? Don't keep company with them. Don't even eat a meal with them. He said, I'm going to visit mama. <laughs> I'm going to visit mama. I'm going to visit papa. And don't want to keep the law. They're rejecting the laws of God. Not to eat with them. No, you keep company with them. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do you not judge them that are within? Judge them within the church. But them that are without, God judge it. Most I go deal with them already. That we saying. He going to deal with them when he come. Do you not judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judge it. Therefore, Put away from among yourself that wicked person. Paul say what? Get the hell, get them the hell away from you. You need to pay attention. Get them away from you. You see that? Ephesians 2 and 1 again. And you are the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Revelation 3 and 1 again. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things, say he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works. I know what? I know thy works and that thou art livest. Sorry, and I know thy works and that thou hast a name and thou livest and are dead. Put to Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7 and read verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you again. So the who shall say, Be careful how you're judging. And why be holders thou knowest the more that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the being that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy mother, brother, let me pull out the moat of the, out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. You see what you're watching this small sin you brother doing, and you have a big, a whole beam in your eye. You see that? Bits of wickedness. You need to pay attention. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast your pools before swine, lest they trample thee under your feet, and turn again and rend thee. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. You keep them laws. Every time you repent, repent, repent. Ask for help. Seek the laws. I will reveal it to you. Knock. And I will open it, I will open your understanding. He said, open the kingdom to you. And for everyone that asketh, receive it, and he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. He said, because if you're dead in sins, and you want to come alive, you want to come back to the laws, the most I said, I will show you the way. I will send men to guide you. I will send heaven and just to guide you if you sin sincere. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son has bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? You see what? You physically know to give it your own gifts. You see that? You reward them. How much more the most I can reward you if you want to repent? If you're knocking at the door? If you're asking for help? If you're asking to, how do I get the kingdom? How do I change? You see that? The most I say, I will send the Spirit to you. I will send the Spirit to teach you. You need to understand. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men do that, sorry, that men would do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law of the prophets. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that which go in there at the, the sin, dead in the sins. They love the sins, go into destruction. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. The law, the law is the way that's going to straight. 
that lead it unto life, immortality. You see that straight and uh, straight commandments. Mat, um, second Ezra seven twenty one. Straight commandments. Straight is the way that lead it unto life. Second Ezra chapter seven and verse twenty one. For God had given straight commandments to such as came, what they should do to live. You see that? Straight commandments. Keep them laws. <laughs> that go back to Matthew 7 and verse 27 and 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, which leadeth to life. The laws and the commandments. And few that be that find it. Few will go repent. They, they see that? The remnant will repent. You need to understand. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are raving in wolves. He said that plenty men will come as false prophets. But it's wolves. You shall know them by their fruits, their actions. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good, tr good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. You see that if you keep in the laws, you cannot sin. So if you're in the midst of sin, you cannot be good. That we're we talking about. But if you keep in the laws, you cannot be evil. Because you know the law. You can love anybody and say, you can apply the law. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. If you're in the midst of sin and you don't want to repent, or you're dead in sins, you don't depend, you will get cast down and cast in the fire. You can put it to death. That we say. Wherefore, by the fruit you shall know them. By the actions, if they keep in the law, you see that? I'm gonna know who you I'm gonna know who you are. You're gonna know them by the actions. Loving the neighbor itself. Keeping the law. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see that? Everybody saying, Lord, the Lord, the Lord. What? You see what? Not all of them come in the kingdom. We, we, we repent, we keep in the laws. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven, you see that? The ones who's keeping the laws. Not, you see that playing super Israelite and ain't keeping the law? You're still sitting on the down low? You see that you're in for the ride, you're in for the fame, you're in for me? Because you understand, he's a trainer going and he's for the ride, you don't want to do what you got to do to get your mind right? Many will say to me that they, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in the name? You see, many of them false prophets or them false vanguards, you see what? Beware what false prophets will say, have we not prophesied in thy name? You see that we went out and we teach in them street corners and we teach and we rebuke and we curse people out in the street. <laughs> we call them wicked, do whatever. You see what? Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in thy name? Yeah, they are saying the word curse Nima. You know, Nima say I curse it, not them. I mean, rebuke them, reprove them sharply. And in thy name I've cast out devils. Many of them go say that the castle. We cast out devil is in the name. And we prophesy in your name. But and in thy name done many wonderful works. You see that? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. You say, Why? I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Means what? You were willfully sinning. Sinning on the long road. Being crafty and cunning. You see that? You love your sin. You don't want to repent. I never knew you. That we say. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The ones who hear and do, meditate on what they do and understand and do. Follow me. That way, Yahushua say. The ones who follow, keep them laws, who repent, and come back and keep them laws. Come back from their dead state. You see that? You know, they don't live it but dead. You see that? You're dead in trespasses and saying, come back to life. I will liken him unto a wise man. You see that? And built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was foundation upon a rock, upon a rock, foundation upon a rock. Your, your, your foundation is solid. That we saying. Once you come into the laws, your foundation, you have a solid base. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. So them ones who repent and come in and still sit on playing games, still sit in the down low. That we say what? And saying, Lord, Lord, we prophesy in your name. You say what? I never knew you. You see that? You build a house on what? Sand. Because you hear and you didn't do. You do them not. You hear the sayings, you, would, you heard, you heard, you was witness against, and you didn't do. That we say, what? You could like into a foolish man with built house, built his house up and sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of the sea, and die in the end. I never knew you. You don't work in equity. Willful sin. And it came to pass, when Yahushua had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that have authority and not as the scribes. He did what? He teach them as one as authority and not as the scribes. You see that? We hypocrites, the vanguards, hypocrites that we're talking about. See, the, the two speaking of fork, our fork tongue. I said that. No, I never said that. But to hear him say that, but he said that two weeks ago. What? But he said that two weeks ago. I never said that. Fork tongue. They we talking about lying. They we talking about most of the Kill it behind. But Luke 6 and verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his, on his disciples and said, Yahushua, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Let's say that weep now, for you shall laugh. You see, you children of Israel start struggling right now, you're going to be laughing. You're going to be laughing. You see that? When you, the Lord took, go back to, go to Psalms 126. What are you talking about? You're going to be laughing. Blessed are you. You're going to laugh. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be filled. And blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Psalms 126 and verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, when the Most High break with shackles and delivered from the hand of these heathen nations, we were like them that dream. It was. It would be like a dream. Like this would be like a blur to us, a dream. 
Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. And then said he among the heathen, The Lord had done great things for them. You see that? You could be laughter. Your, your mouth could be what? Laughter. You could be filled with laughter. Go back to um, Luke 6 and verse 21. Blessed are ye that weep now, yet captivity and conquered, suffered in, the, in, the, in the, the, the four corners of the earth in the fabulous hood reservation, ghetto slums, conquered in slavery, for ye shall laugh. That would be most likely because that God when the Lord turned in captivity, according to Psalm 126. You mouth to be full of laughter. You see that? Right among the heathen. You need to pay attention. Luke 6 and 22. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company. You see, when they hate you behind, you see that in the midst of them, and in the midst of the congregation, in the midst of the sanctuaries, the schools, the churches, and they hate God. And they're separating, you, you, you see that they're separating, they're doing things, you don't have a clue what's going on, there's nothing, they're just they're keeping you, locking you out. When blessed are you, it's about you, when men shall separate you, they're going to hate you, and they shall separate you from their company. That's what but it's about you. You're the goal of being refined. That's what the say. Enjoy it. What's the verse brought against Sirach 2 and 1 to 5? What service brought upon you? Take it cheerfully. Enjoy it. That's what he's saying. Blessed are you. It's about you. You're the elect. You're my, you were with me from the beginning. You were so, you're suffering like Christ suffered. That's what they do to him. What did the Pharisees do to him? Take him under the arms? No. Reject him. <laughs> you don't want a part of you. You're blasphemer. You, you're the devil. You're bezy. But see what? Blessed are you. When they shall separate you from my company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man. See, when they blaspheme your name. You see that? When they what? Character assassinate you. They always say, blessed are you. Because you're teaching for the Son of Man, say for teaching Christ. For teaching, thus say the Lord. You need to understand. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, the reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. They are the children of the, 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 that, you are the children of the, that killed the prophets. You need to understand. They were doing the same thing. This is the wicked. Same wicked spirit. Wicked spirits from the beginning. You need to, but woe unto you that are rich, for you have received a consolation. You see that? Because they are dead in sins right now. You see that they are living it up. You need to understand. I pray you get some understanding from today's class. Dead in trespasses and sins. It means that you have to return of Israel to repent and come out of your sins. Come out from your dead zombie state. And return to the laws of God. Shalom.